How do we get started? Hey, look, wow, I think that transitioned even faster. Holy moly. Least professional phone? thing. Yes, I tested okay. the microphones earlier. Cool. Least professional thing I've ever done is go, holy moly, at the beginning of my broadcast, <laughs> which I think is a consistent feature. So, oh boy, uh, it's been a little while. Welcome, uh, if you're watching and uh, either live on uh, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 or on youtube.com slash ENCAF1, or probably I should have a few other uh, with my name on it. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Uh, I am the GM and host of this 5th uh, edition D&D &D, uh, spectacle that we're about to do, Legends of the Drowned Isles. Um, we're going to get started in a minute, but first, uh, why don't we introduce the players, starting on my left. Hi, I'm Jody. I play Clark, the uh, half-orc fighting rogue, who's uh, going to do a thing. We'll see if it works out. There are things involved, yes. I play Elzara. My name is Murray, uh, and Elzara is just kind of there now. Recently married a tree, you know. It's a druid thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm Pat. No one's quite sure why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Well, Kuzaima, the uh, the uh, roguish uh, kobold, uh, yeah. Kind of went off. Exit stage uh, north. Up. <laughs> up. <laughs> hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Zakis, half elf wizard, who is currently probably making really awkward conversation with Clark because Clark just. Denied the uh, teleport taxi. Also, background is dark, and my shirt is dark, so I look like a floating head. Now a floating <laughs> face. Now a floating head again. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, you may notice we have uh, upgraded some of the backgrounds. We now have a roaring fire behind us, uh, which is ironic, given that it always seems to be a little warmer uh, than I like it in here. But I'm blooded or something uh, and we will continue to uh, transform and change things uh, over time uh, and if you have any suggestions we'd love to hear them if you're watching we'd love to hear that too so we're going to catch up on this strange homebrew campaign at least in the last session or so uh, to give you and myself and my players uh, a little bit of memory uh, this is from my memory so uh, if you do have uh, a correction to me please uh, gently inform me and we'll put that in but in the land of shadow, this strange realm of the undying, the group had found themselves, well, faced with a dragon. An invasion by an ancient black dragon called Givanetta and her horde. Divided by circumstance, Clark and Ironbound, or Kuzaima, were caught between the hedge mage at the center of the grove while a group of lizard men threatened from deeper in. Zakas and Elzera found wise ways to fly to the front where an Adult black dragon, one of the brood, but not given at her herself, threatened the orb containing the seed. The dragon uh, shedded uh, lizardmen allies onto the field and cut down the elven druids who tried to put up a feeble defense. Meanwhile, above them, Elzera's uh, grandmother, with elves that are long lived, sometimes these relations get a little confusing, but so far as we can tell, Zora Leanda is the grandmother of Elzera, the founder of this particular grove, facing off directly against the massive dragon, the spiraling form of Givanetta. Throughout the battle, they traded hits and barbed words, with Givanetta taunting Zora Leanda, while suggesting they could also ally together again. Elzar, in an elemental form, defended the seed against the dragon, who breathed wave after wave of stinging acid breath across her and across the orb. Soon to be. Hmm? What did I say? Elzar. Elzar? Did I really? Who are you? Who am I? I, cut, I lost a syllable. Yeah, it's the fanfic Elzar the un Invincible. Uh, Elzara, pardon my pronunciation. Uh, but it soon became clear that the dragon wasn't actually trying to avoid damaging the orb, but was intent on melting it down or making it at least exposed to the air again. Perhaps for the first time it had been released in hundreds of years in this strange place. The seed does become damaged through the process, however, and Elzera takes the seed and flies off into the forest. This is not all a linear recounting of what happened, it's more of a thematic accounting. Uh, meanwhile, the dragon's cry also had a strange effect on the giant snake who was a servant of the grove. Against its will, it seemed to turn on the group, but was unable to do much. In addition, the nervous dryad, Radix, went down but managed to rally and survive. Above them, the battle raged until finally, caught in the crossfire between several of Gevena's brood, Zora Leanda seems to have been utterly destroyed. With her death, 
The magic which held the grove in a living state also vanished, leaving it cold and lifeless once more, like much of festering. Wounded, and feeling her fiancé's soul attached to the great seed, Alzara found a space on the ground in the woods, cleared a shallow hole, and then placed the seed within. Within seconds the ground rumbled and a faint glow came from the hole, and where the seed had been an enormous tree grew. It surged upwards, displacing the forest of large trees around it like there were nothing more than weeds. Up it climbed, and then connected with the roof of shadow, but it did not stop then. The tree did not slow in its growth, piercing through the rock as if it were water, and white rings of power surrounded the limbs as they vanished through the ceiling. Everyone witnessed the rebirth of Yggdrasil, the Tree of Worlds. When the tree pierced the roof, Givenetta let out a cry of triumph and called out to her brood. With that, they flew higher and left through the cracks around the tree's branches. In the aftermath, Elzera found the tree behind her, embracing her, a familiar sense of a long-lost fiancé coming again. Around her finger, where the engagement ring, ring once was worn, now there was a ring of wood. To Clark, another apparition appeared, someone who seemed to be part elf, part otherworldly being, and all smiles. It seems that Marius had come to celebrate the victory as well. Clark grumpily handed him a scythe, and then told him he would be back, turning roughly in the direction of the Temple of Nemozny, where the bone of Paluxy was once found, or was once, sorry, stored, Sword. intent on perhaps retrieving it, maybe for a bargain. And we'll open with that moment. I have a question that I realized. I wrote the staff, but I didn't write what it was called. It's called the Staff of Withering. Of Withering. And I printed it out, and it didn't print. So I will have a copy for you, but you can look it up on D&D Beyond. Perfect. So, looking off in the direction, roughly, of where the temple is, mm. between you and it, lay miles upon miles of that shifting forest of festering. Behind you, kind of looking back around, there's no sign of Marius. And there's no sign of the slide, either. You do notice Elzera, head probably a bit bowed at this point, leaning up against the tree, probably a bit exhausted, actually, from what's just happened. Guzaima is nowhere to be found. You had seen him scampering at the base of the tree, but he was quickly long lost among the, uh, the branches. Mm. And Zacchaeus, where is Zacchaeus in all of this? Well, he was interested in uh, fetching the uh, bone of Philoxia, so probably going to go with Clark and try to... Uh... Well, Clark hasn't quite left yet. Okay. Uh, but he's kind of looking he's around. He's made his intentions known. Yep. Clark also moves very slowly. So he also wants to make sure <laughs> Elzara's time. okay. And, <laughs> and from where you're, the two of you especially are standing, you can see that while there is a clearing still, uh, the magic that it once held it back, uh, held the infestation of festering back has faded to be replaced by some other sort of aura around the tree itself. But you can see that the edge of the aura is once again the thick of festering. And getting through that will be just as difficult as it was before. More so now. Perhaps. Uh, Radix is with you as well. <laughs> Radix is more or less staring at the tree in awe uh, and kind of walking over to it in a bit of a, a, bit of a daze. So what would you like to say to each other? seems calm for the moment even the bodies of those uh, elves were here the the dwarves or sorry the uh, druids have vanished maybe they didn't even exist maybe it was all part of the spell that Zori Leanda had cast to create this space or maybe it was the orb or the seed or the egg or whatever name you want to use for it maybe it was that that generated the the grove but all that seems to be gone so did uh, anybody see which of these thousand holes in the sky that Kuzama went through? Nope. Ooh. It looks like a treacherous climb as well. And the branches interweave and stretch such that from where you're standing on the ground, you can't even follow a particular branch to the hole that reaches in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. He did say when he left... He was, oh, he told you in specific that yeah. he was going to look for a way out. Yeah. He said he'd be back. All right. Hopefully it's easy enough to come back. 
You know, I believe that we've had about a short rest because I think Kuzima took a short rest in the tree. Oh, Kuzima took an eight-hour rest. He's yeah, he's yeah, sleeping right now. Excellent. But it's certainly a short rest right away. Good enough for me. Yeah. Cuckoo. You do remember that there were things in festering, and there are other creatures here. Right. So staying standing out in the open might not be as safe as as uh, you can. But for the moment, it seems calm. I mean, didn't every like everything clear? Like is, the, it became a clearing. Essentially, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what you'd realize is after the spell had faded is most of it wasn't even there to begin with. Yeah. Uh, most of it was either the dream or spell of Zora Leanda that was manufacturing not only some of the furniture and the food mm -hmm. and all of that, but even the greenery that you, that you were there. But all of you remember seeing and smelling and feeling it. Mm -hmm. uh, the spell was so powerful that it created it for the time that she was there. Occasionally tasting it and eating it. Absolutely. Everything felt completely real. But you also know that food has no value here, it seems to. I mean, like, the, the trees that were festering itself, because yep. everything cleared. Essentially, it, the area around the tree is cleared yeah. um, rest, rest for several hundred feet. Still, still out there. But okay. festering itself, in fact, if you recall, you traveled almost a, most of a day, really, to get to the grove yeah. through festering, but there was also a space there where apparently the power of the grove had pushed outward. Looking outward, you can tell that that space is not as long as it was when you first came here. So the grove was pushing back festering farther. The the tree, Yggdrasil, is pushing it out, but not as far. Okay. So the festering is not like creeping in towards us. In it looks like it's already recovered the space, but it seems to be held at bay. Okay. Cool. I could um, fly us all up there after we retrieve the uh, bag of folding. I know how you feel about magic, but that, that is a very treacherous climb. Can Clark see the tree from behind him? Is it that tall? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it reaches hundreds of feet into right. the air and right through the very solid roof of the, right. of the cavern itself. And if you'll remember, we, we were transformed into air when we were first heading towards the Temple of Namazuni, so how much can flying hurt a second time, really? I'm not a fan of your magics. I mean, it can turn us into air again. I know you don't like it, but like, it's better than to... you, it's better than being turned into a cat. Huh? Not <laughs> helping. What? Trying to be funny. <laughs> I read in a book one time that humor di diffuses such situations. Look, I don't want to be here longer than we need to, and being able to go across quicker will make things a lot easier on everyone. All right, let's do it. You also do recall that between you and the temple and everything else is Greybrook. And the one way you had had to get across Greybrook, the tunnel underneath it, collapsed behind you. Yeah. Uh, you do recall them mentioning something about a bridge on the other end, but it's very close to Hard Gloom. Yeah. Um, so, because I can turn us into wind and we can move 300 feet per round. All right. I could get us to the temple instantly. Uh, we've established, haven't we, that teleportation doesn't work here? I thought. That... Uh, there are problems with it. Um, you would have understood that from studying the, uh, the work that, uh, back in the tower, uh, in Emerald's Tower, the amount of effort that he went into to building the teleportation circle and the correspondence meant that he was overcoming a lot of difficulty. And this place, um, through that you would also come to realize that this place is isolated in, in, in stronger ways than most magic is able to do. Um, it, yeah. is, it is not only a plane of existence, it is an isolated plane of existence. So I couldn't, like, I figured the teleporting was extremely difficult, like, from this plane to another one, but it's still, like, within this plane to this plane. You're certainly welcome to try. Elzara is not you're, willing you're a little, to try. You're a little <laughs> nervous about it internally, perhaps, because as Elzara has raised, there have been some strange things happening here, and it felt like there were dangers involved, yeah. but you can give it a try. Zagus wants to try, but he's getting, like, pointed looks from both of these two, so he's, he probably won't. <laughs> I mean, Clark's just suspicious of magic to yeah. begin with, and... And if he's, like, willing this to go is, with the air thing, I don't want to, like, make it worse. This is something we've done before. <laughs> yeah. It's true. In this play. Okay. All right. So... Well, if we see any creepy monsters or dreams that look too real to be true, let's avoid those this time. 
It takes a minute to get out of this farm, so please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're going to cast Windwalk? Yep. Okay. Um, how is your reaction after stepping up from the tree? Because clearly you've joined the conversation here, but what does Elzara look like, or how does she seem to feel to everyone else? Calm. Less anxious than anybody has ever seen her. Okay. Even stepping a few feet away from the tree, it doesn't feel distant. And you can feel the sort of gentle warmth of the, the ring. But when you do get a few feet away, you get that strange sort of sense, like two strings being played slightly opposite each other, where they, they cross over a part of the vibration, but other parts they are at separate angles. And you realize it still maintains a pull back to the other small grove. Back to where, um, this is where I gotta check my damn notes. These names are hard. Where, uh, 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 Cotton, that's his last name. Yeah. Uh, Bernard, Bernard Cotton is, uh, and you recognize that sort of whole, uh, feeling. Radix is still staring at the tree, and as you kind of pass by her to talk to the others, she barely even seems to notice you there is a look of reverence and the welling up of tears around her eyes. Um, you can well imagine dryads who live their entire lives with trees and her having probably spent her entire life here and festering with this uneven relationship with the, the, uh, the terrible vines and trees that are always trying to feast on you. Seeing something like this would be the equivalent probably of seeing a god. And she seems completely wrapped at the moment. I mean, I also did just talk to Marius as well. True, true. So. Two gods. <laughs> it, I'm assuming Radix is coming with us as wind. If she chooses to. Yeah, once once we establish that that's what we, we're doing, I do offer that to her as well uh, for her to go back. She seems distracted and at first doesn't seem to hear you and then sort of turns to you with a confusion across her face. Leave? Where? Why? What? We still have things that we need to do and you need to go back to, to your sisters. And you can see this sort of look of, of realization and also this deep sigh as her, as her shoulders kind of bend down. And she sort of realize, realizes kind of the truth of your words, but at the same time, the the glow of this tree and her vision is still strong. Oh. It is still linked to the tree in the grove. In your grove. I can sense it somehow. It's... And she looks again up at the tree, just sort of wide-eyed. And, and even though you guys have moved a few, you know, even a, a dozen yards away from the tree, it still kind of fills your vision in that direction. It's such a massive, uh, massive tree. And you can still see that it's, it's still growing. Um, there's still small branches being broken off every once in a while. And even if you stare at it for just a moment, you can even notice the base of the trunk still getting a little larger. Not as rapidly as it was before, but still um, growing older. Uh, like you would have seen, well, like some of the grove have probably seen some of the ancient trees there grow year after year, putting on ring after ring. Now, minutes are like out, are like years to it. Um, but finally, she she nods. But I'll come back. I'll be back. You can bring your sisters. Yeah, you know where it is and now. And Bernard to visit. We can come back. Okay, I will go with you. Um, we're going to kind of be going by that area, right? To leave, and then... From where you are now, yeah, you'll be passing by the temple, and then beyond that, the temple is where the grove, where Bernard's Grove was. Okay. Because remember, you you passed by the temple first, and then you went on to Bernard's Grove. Yeah. So, basically, because she doesn't need to be stay near me for this to work. It's an effect on her. Mm -hmm. So she could go directly home. Okay. Are you going to explain that to her? If she wanted to. That, that's why I'm... Okay. But what about all of you? I was tasked to be your guide. Do you, do you not need it anymore? Once we're out of the festering, then we should be good. Oh. 
then I can go directly home. Yeah. And then you see well, her well, kind well, of well, light well. up a little bit. How does this work? So I, I'll cast the spell on all of us, and then we think for a minute about becoming air, and then we become air. Oh. And then once you get home, you can spend another minute thinking about be- becoming solid again. Okay. I've never tried to think to become anything other than a tree. This will be interesting. It is. It's fun. You'll be able to go really, really fast. I'm ready. So, and I cast that. And I do ask her uh, if she wants to continue to stay with us until we're out of the festering, and then she can go back. That way it's a little bit safer. She does want to stay with you until out of festering, yes. So. All right. You take the moment to cast the spell. What does it look like when Elzara casts the spell? Um, Since it, it takes a minute, it's probably not just standing still for a moment. It's... What is it? It involves fire and holy water, so like... <laughs> uh, I'd say it's probably more like making a circle with the holy water and then okay. having a flame in the middle. And then something like that. Okay, so you move around the others and kind of spread the holy water out. Um, it makes barely any difference to the ground, which has already started to, to reach that hard gray state as most of the ground here has. Um, but you easily trace that around, uh, bring forth fire. And everyone kind of breathes in this mixture of steam flowing from the the holy water even though not touching the fire its essence is transferred into you and then in that breathing find yourself starting to change become insubstantial Um, there's a little squeal from radix of surprise at this this uh process and she begins to say something but it's lost in a a few seconds uh, as the transformation takes hold you each see the vague outline of one another now turned into something even more insubstantial than your your air form. Um, It's almost unnoticeable and nothing more than simple gestures can really be communicated. Even those are strangely blurred and almost after imaged after image as your your form shifts and shakes. And you begin to fly. For uh, I will for a moment fly up to make sure that Kuzaima isn't somewhere on the tree. Okay. Um, but make a perception to... check. That's a 16. 16? Looking at the tree, it's it's hard to 17. make out details. Um, you can move a little bit closer, and as you do, you start to see that there are small leaves now forming on the trees. The strangest thing about the leaves is the fact that they are not of a single tree. The leaves are vastly different. There's even some uh, pine branches that seem to be growing. Uh, almost as though this is not a tree, this is all trees. Almost as though this is not um, a, a living example of a tree, but the original tree from which all others sprung. Amongst there you do see some motion. Uh, you make out the small forms, small from your perspective, small from the size of the tree, because that strange perspective problem of looking at something so large, uh, you realize are some of the lizard men you'd seen before trying but having a hard time moving very far up the tree Uh, maybe only you know 50 feet at this point Um, they must have snuck up while you just stepped away because you were at the very base of the tree Uh, but they seem to be trying hard but not getting very far Um, you also notice the tree kind of shift and shake a little bit as they move uh, almost as though it is in a not largely effective way, but in a symbolic gesture trying to shake them free. Um, but you do not see Guzaima amongst those. Um, cool. I'll nod. I will touch a branch of the tree. And then I'll... Okay. Um, you kind of go to touch it and it's more like the the, the smoke or, or the, the cloud envelops it for a moment. Um, but the, the band where the hand touches 
um, a little bit of moss grows instantly in the handprint where you were responding to you. As you go up higher, and for Zacchaeus and for Elzera, flying is something you've had an opportunity to do a few times. For Clark, it's still new. It's still unnerving. You can feel nothing of yourself. In fact, you can literally put your hand through where your form is, as though you are nothing more than a ghost. Um, it is bewildering, bewildering and also probably somewhat unnerving because you also know that you cannot strike a thing if you are not a thing yourself. Uh, but as you rise higher in the ground, or higher from the ground, you look down, and all of you can see the radius of clearing around this tree, festering still thick, strong, those, uh, those gnarled trees still twisted and forming a very thick canopy all the way to the ceiling. Um, so that even when the clearing is here, there is no direct clear path nor clear vision outward um, you're still surrounded by festering in that way. Um, who's going to navigate? Okay. I guess. <laughs> so make me a survival roll. As you try to get your bearings as to where you should go. Nat 20. I like how you have like three rolling things that still fell out of all of them. Yep. But a nat 20 is a great start. Oh, so a 29. Uh, as you, using the tree itself as one, uh, one bearing using the now stronger pull to the other grove as another you find a way to navigate which up to this point there had been very little opportunity except for this one pull uh, and because you can't even st see uh, the the twin uh, bright red orbs which normally mark the one landmark in here you still have a decent direction to go you head off in that direction the three of you radix included also following flying through this one of the things that you find which is exhilarating is that you are not slowed. Mm. Despite how slow your movement had become on ground, it seems to have no effect in this form. And for that exhilarating moment, it is that part seems to be restored. Mm. You head into and through the festering woods. At this point, the woods are once again overgrown and thick not something which will cause any harm to your, your physical forms, even though you do all notice that festering reacts, that the, the vines and the spines try as, as much as they can to try to, to, uh, to connect to you. So they, it is aware of you. However, it's very difficult and very easy to get lost. I would like the two of you and also for Radix to make a perception check to watch where she's going. She's the only one who actually has a direction. Number one. Thirteen. Okay. But I have the uh, memory feature. What's it called? Uh, keen mind. Keen mind, yeah. Keen mind. Do you remember like exactly he where always he always north. So he always knows There is no direction. north here. So uh, it, it's, and it's not a matter of finding north, it's finding her. Mm. Right. Yeah. Because you're trying to follow her. So, um, what was your total perception? Perception? That's pretty low. I think it's only plus two. So natural yeah. one for a total. So the natural one is probably going to be the more yeah. important part. Um, it's still a total of eleven. For make us. a make a perception check as well. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. So as you move forward with the full intent of moving as fast as you possibly can, and the full almost joy of it, uh, knowing that festering can no longer uh, affect you, and also you feel somewhat protected in, even by the ring itself. Um, even though you've not detected much of a magical presence, its presence is strong strong for you. You look back over your shoulder and you see Radix keeping up with you very easily. Uh, she, at first, had, had been sort of darting as if jumping from one tree to another, but now boldly charging right on through, uh, as if, as if uh, uh, kind of sp sprinting happily. Um, over the other shoulder you see uh, Zacchaeus, um, what is what what causes Zacchaeus to be a little distracted here? Why is he lagging behind a little bit? Trying to orient myself to what I remember, like relative to the to the Ember Skull eyes in the sky, okay. versus trying to follow Elzera. So it's like trying to keep track of both things at the same time. Okay, you have this nagging sensation that the Ember Skull should be right there, but I can't see anything. And you look back and where she go? A little bit of a, of a wisp, but you are managing to keep up, and you have to kind of catch back up. As you look back on the other side, you see no sign of Clark. 
What has distracted Clark from keeping up? Probably his thoughts. Okay. A lot of stuff rolling around his head, so he probably uh, veers left at okay. some point, and then looks up and uh, where to go. So as you're moving along, and again the the might of festering is trying to bring itself to bear to hold you where you were and a little bit of instinct in trying to dodge around it that goes away as you find it ineffective towards you but out of the corner of your eye there's a shape that it strikes suddenly and was that your sister's face that you saw mm. and so you veer off in that direction um, trying to find that uh, but you've noticed now, uh, Elzara, that you do not see Clark. Um, and you quickly look around and realize you don't recognize any of this. And I you do not too. see your sister's face. Well, fit. Um, I'm the only one who can navigate in this area. So. You feel confident about it. And you've yeah. got those bearings now that make it easier. Yeah. Um, so I am going to... Once the other two catch up to me, I'm going to stop. So, Elzer, you've stopped for the moment. Okay. Uh, I'll also stop. I am going to point to you and point to Radix and go like this. Okay. All right. I'm going to go find Clark. (laughs) (laughs) I'm assuming I know what what this meant. Uh, That part's pretty easy. The other part is a little bit weird. The sort of hourglass figure that uh, Clark cuts. Another person. But she is kind of gesturing to a space where there is not a Clark, <laughs> which is sort of an in induction. Uh, and I'm going to go try to, like, I'll do a per- perimeter and try okay. to see if he's gone far. What's Clark doing at this moment, realizing that he's lost? He'd that... probably go up to, to get a, a better vantage. Okay. Um, you go up, and I presume you guys have been fairly high up yeah. to begin with, uh, and you quickly come into the solid surface of the roof of the cavern. I don't think he'd go that high. Okay. He, he doesn't want to become above the trees. again and fall, okay. so All right. go above the trees and then just sort of see um, the horizon check as best you could. Okay. You climb upward a bit. Uh, make a perception check. Sure. How about a 17 this time? 17. As you climb upward, um, you start to realize that there is more than the trees here. Uh, as you start to pick out uh, a, a skeleton over there, and it looks like part of a shredded arm in this other part, and other uh, elements of bodies around you, and you come to realize that the you find yourself effectively in a graveyard that Festering had created. And as it grew upward, it took the bits and pieces with them. Slowly now you can see the, the, the writhing forms of these uh, vines that have kind of sunk their large thorns into the flesh and are slowly pulling it apart, but in a, in a minuscule way. You know, to move an inch will take an hour, but you're fully aware of this uh, around you. Clark will take note. And you also hear something. Voices. In pain, All right. voices in in loss, and who are lost, as you kind of realize that it's not dissimilar to what you'd heard from the scythe itself. Okay. The sounds of the dead who are lost, the right. sounds of the dead who do not know maybe even where they are anymore. All they know is what they remember, and what they remember is gone, mm. and it gives you a pause for a second. You see Clark floating vaguely over in a particular direction um, and then also come to realize as you fly almost straight into and probably instinctually move around an arm dangling in a tree in front of you. But you see Clark's form as he looks around the space that he's in. I start like herding him towards the rest of the group. <laughs> so you kind of swirl in and around and catch the, the sight of uh, Clark. You see familiar, vague shape. Right. Um, that seems to be indicating for you to go back and... Clark will look up and follow. She found you. You have been found. Congratulations. As you head back, this time perhaps paying a little more attention to mm-hmm. what's going on, you quickly meet up with the other two. 
uh, and then head back off in that same direction. Now, are you heading directly for the grove or are you using that as a bearing? What's your desired uh, direction? I'm going to, I think we're going to drop off Radex and then go. Okay. Um, so you're heading deeper into Festering then to kind of go around to the other side. Or do you want to try to cross Greybrook right away? I think crossing Greybrook Brook and then, yeah. Okay. Within about an hour, and you've been traveling through Festering for so long, it's almost impossible to gauge size and space, but knowing that you must be moving at a high rate, it feels as though Festering is larger, and that may also be a feature of Festering itself, that it feels larger on the inside. But finally, you cut through the edge of this bramble forest. Below you, you can see the roiling mass form of the uh, the uh, writhing gray brook, uh, within which you know live creatures. With it is not water, or not just water. Every once in a while, as you look down, as you're flying over it, and at this point, it's probably about uh, almost eighty feet wide. Um, you think you make out one of those tentacled gray heads that did bobs below the surface again and also a larger mass that seems to be swimming among them, one that's almost half as wide as the river itself. Um, seems to be moving away from where you are, as if following the river to its other end. But quickly you find yourself passed over Greybrook, back onto the familiar area where the stone is a little more red than gray, but not much more. From this vantage point, you can see off to uh, kind of behind you, Ember Skull, you're once again reoriented and vindicated because that was exactly where you said it was. Totally. But it didn't, you couldn't see it. There was no way to orient yourself otherwise. Um, off in that direction, it still glows bright, a beacon in this otherwise dim place. Slightly uh, off to the west of it is the mass of hard gloom itself, a perpetual shadow in which large pillars of, of black stone seem to emerge across the way from you. The completely opposite of festering is still Withergate, that sodden city of stone with the perpetual miners who never seem to make it any further, but occasionally find strikes like the bone you had found. And then turning southward, essentially southward or, or opposite of the, of the Ember Skull, another piece of orientation comes to you as you see the strange double coned or stalactite kind of shape of this of the uh, the umbral nest uh, which has been there which people have mentioned but um, it seems to be in constant motion like a, a double-ended storm or a twister which is inverted in on itself with a thin middle twisting and turning no one seems to be on the road here but not far from the um, looking southward you can actually make out the the bridge over the over festering over a gray brook mm -hmm. And you can see a mass of people gathered there. And there seems to be some sort of fighting going on right at the edge of the river, uh, on the bridge and across the bridge. Um, the sounds kind of reach you in distant snatches and, and grabs. Uh, the sounds of many, uh, uh, looks like dwarves, all gathered together and fighting every manner of creature you've seen so far. The Illithid in particular are there, but also their minions. Um, you do see something now, that large bulge that was in the river finally makes it there more quickly than you might have expected, and large tentacles start lashing out from it onto and pulling creatures off of the bridge. A, a massive fight seems to be happening there. It looks, as you kind of take it all in, it looks as though a full-sized army has taken or is taking on, to, on the bridge and trying to cross, while in the, in the water the Illithid are trying to claim their own. Mm. Seeing that... I suspect you turn back to the mission you have at hand, knowing that that's a dangerous way to go to begin with. Yep. Mm -hmm. And set your sights back in the direction of the umbral nest, but not so far. Mm. You see the road you traveled on as you came here before. Um, it seems no more worn than it was before, as if there had been no passage of time, but you feel the weight of days that you've been in there. In particular, the tower itself, time seemed to act strangely, and it took twice as long to come back up as it did to go down. Everything in 
festering seem to have that strange twisted quality. As you fly over, over, um, all of you can make a perception check once again. Oh, that's an 18. 11. So 27. Okay. 29, 27, and... 11. 11. <laughs> You're kind of looking over at that umbral nest and kind of like, I wonder what the hell that thing is. As it sort of twists and turns, every once in a while a, 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 a tendril seems to reach out uh, from it and gather some small wisp of smoke back into it. But it's very far away from here. The two of you, however, taking in the scene... Uh, look back down to where Festering is, and at the edge of the Greybrook, um, you actually see uh, uh, the launching of several ropes from higher up in the Festering that are launching down and uh, attaching themselves on the far side of Greybrook. Uh, they seem to be almost harpoon-like launches, but more forceful. And after five ropes go down, uh, you see a group of uh, of lizard men sliding down the ropes and crossing Greybrook. Uh, one is a little too close to the bottom, and you see a tendril reach up and grab and yank him off the rope. The rope itself goes, holds barely, but the next person decides not to go on that rope. Even tugging it a little bit pulls it free, and it drips into the water and is itself starting to go taut from whatever in the water is pulling at it. Um, but you see them kind of crossing Greybrook, not far from where you were, actually not far from where you'd come out. You continue to move along. Those are the lizard men that were fighting us. Seem to be the same ones, yeah, <laughs> or at least similar. Okay. Um, am I still looking at the uh, umbral nest, or am I eventually following them again? Uh, you you notice when they move and okay. make rapid uh, motion to catch up. <laughs> well, yeah, it's all comes out. Unfortunately, <laughs> is the whisping, whisping of the wind. Um, no, we need to get Radix back. Okay. You fly on further. This time, what took hours upon hours is taking nothing more than a few minutes. Um, swiftly, how high up are you flying? Um, I'd have come, like, down to, like, halfway up a tree. Okay. About. Okay. Anybody uh, who would be traveling along here, not that there is, but what they would only notice is the wisping of the wind, a strange breeze that seems to come in in four uh, small bursts and then is gone again blowing up a little bit of dust but leaving nothing else behind and as you crest the hill right before the temple of Damazani, um you can see it now and it looks different whereas before uh, it is the, still the same shape a squat squarish building with flat walls before it had had a little bit of a dull appearance to its outside um, it was white stone or appeared to be white stone but almost as though it had been been uh, graying for a long time. But as you look at it now, it almost seems to glow. It seems renewed and strengthened. It seems as though the... Um, I have a bad feeling about my bag of holding. The <laughs> life or the energy of the place is, is returned. It could be because of the tree. And voices start coming to you. As you notice, there are two people, one on the threshold of the door, one you remember very well, uh, the small speaker Orda, who helped defend the temple with you before. But the other is considerably different. Uh, standing before the, uh, the temple, about 10 feet away, um, somewhat angrily gesturing, at first indistinct voices, uh, you see what looks to be a woman um, standing about a little over six feet tall, um, you see as she angrily gestures from time to time the flexing of enormous wings on her back uh, that seem to be of a dull red. And as you come closer and hear a little bit more stat snatches of the, the words, uh, you hear, But when are they coming back? It's important that I speak to them and that we deliver it. And Orda seems to be suggesting, I don't know. I don't know if they're ever coming back. But I don't think I agree with you. And that's what you see as you crest over. It seems to be an argument. It doesn't seem to be entirely violent. 
and while you can see a large sword strapped to the back of this strange creature, it's gesturing with its hands. It's making no motion to do anything dangerous, at least not at the moment. And Orda doesn't seem to be concerned so much as just... How would I put this? Talking. Can I basically, like, sit, like, not at the edge of the building, but, like, this is the door about here, and just listen to what's going on? You certainly can. Just I'm definitely listening to what's going on. Okay. How about Clark? Clark would look to go between them and into the building. Okay. Possible. All right. Um, for the two of you, uh, make a stealth check. You get advantage because you are basically invisible. You're not impossible to see, but something but might see something. 21. Okay, or maybe not. <laughs> 12! Okay. As you kind of take your, your winding forms and kind of go over, uh, Radix is sort of staying back. She doesn't want to get that close. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of hunkering down kind of behind that. If you remember, there was a rock sitting on the top of the hill which provided you cover the first time where, Orda, where you actually ran into Orda as he was trying to get back into the temple uh, and kind of finds uh, herself hiding there as you dash inward. Uh, we'll have you... Actually, not really a stealth roll in that case. Okay. Uh, as you dash inward towards the uh, towards the, the open doorway where Orda is standing and find yourself hitting a, sol a solid surface and then thinking shield. back to the protection the temple had where, without permission, no one could enter. Um, but you come essentially face-to-face -face with Orda who looks up and is trying to figure out your shape. Uh, the other one steps back a few feet and actually uh, extends her wings and floats back a few feet. What is this? Is this one of them? Clark will do the thinking about being solid. Okay. Where are you going to stand? Right, just uh, where you are? A foot off the ground. Okay. As you uh, start to, to uh, concentrate on this, your form becomes a little more distinct. The two of you see... Uh, Clark now clearly starting to revert I'm back. I'm going to lie down on my back and start doing the same thing. Okay. <laughs> so that, yeah, like, same. I can't be seen. Okay. I mean, if Clark is turning solid, I'm probably going to turn solid too. Okay. All right. Um, Just so he doesn't say anything offensive or start a fight with a winged lady. <laughs> Uh, you can see this close up to her as well that she's wearing a, a heavy black armor. It's almost featureless. It's got a little bit of red in a few a few places, but otherwise it, you couldn't see it from far far behind. It's almost like its own cloak. Uh, the inner part of the wings too, though, are, are red, almost feathered. Uh, and she kind of steps back a little bit and looks, kind of crosses her arms as if waiting. Um, Orda on the other side, oh, I think that's one of them now. Uh, kind of cheerfully uh, speaking. After about a minute, um, you have come back to distinct form, and Orda has now confirmed. Oh, yeah, that's one of them. Uh, he seems cheerful, um, and you can almost get a sense as your physical form starts to come back um, of almost this radiation of, of, uh, of light or energy or power coming from the building itself. And he seems to be completely calm, uh, almost, like I said, almost happy. Uh, whereas on the other side, the thing that uh, has been confronting him uh, looks impatient. Uh, and uh, you can... Uh, no, she does not have a tail. Just remember that. Um, but uh, seems to be uh, waiting for this process to end. After that awkward minute in which nothing can be said, you find yourself coming to solid form and dropping down a foot to the ground uh, yeah. and catching your yourself. Are you doing the uh, superhero stance and going down three, yeah. three points? No, okay. <laughs> Um, it's like he's stepping off a stool. On the other side, it will have both of you, as you come back to physical form, also do another stealth roll. This time you do not have advantage. I'm not trying to hide anymore at this point. Okay, well. So yeah, Man, that would have been a 17. Okay. <laughs> Instinctively, you've kind of put yourself around the corner of the building. I mean, I've, um, I'm lying down on my back. Yep, yep. Mm. All right. It's how a loosely, like, air-shaped makes a face bomb, is that it? <laughs> uh, the woman turns to you are you one of the bearers did you carry it here she seems to have started in the middle of the conversation who are you I am 
going to look her name up. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there's something I forgot. Uh, where is she? I am known as Arkazix. If you want to write it down, it's A-R-K-A-X-I-X-X. -X -X. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I totally spelled that wrong. <laughs> A-R-K-A. And I come here on behalf of my lord. Who is? The one and the only proper, proper ruler of this realm. Lord Paturo, grinder of souls, maker of new, and destroyer of old. I am Clark, he says. Well, you're, you're back in your solid okay. form at this point. Clark, well met. I have heard your name. The Lord speaks of it well. And your others, are they dead? No. No. I, I, I'm still <laughs> staying quiet. And she kind of turns over, into the picture. turns over to you. Greetings, Arkazix. I'm Zakis and Lana Porter. Pleased to meet you. We've heard a lot about your boss, your master. I'm sure you have. Perhaps all lies. But we are used to this. I am going to, like, because I'm still on the roof. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to, like, sneak behind the Physically building. in contact with the building, it almost feels like it hums on its own, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, like, climb down the back of the building. Okay. I won't belabor the point. You, you can uh, fairly easily climb down. And, like, I'm, I'm staying, like, behind the building and listening to what's going on. Okay. Um, then only the two of you survived. Unfortunate, but you are enough. Uh, well... Others survived. Are they not here? Uh, we... You, you probably saw the tree far in the distance. I do not know of any more trees than festering. Ooh, and I do okay. not wish to know them. That's... Oh, this one you will want to know. Anyway, um, it's possibly not my place to tell you about it, but uh, you'll come to hear about it in due, in due time. Uh, I've heard about Pichiro. Two different sides, but uh, I believe what's in the murals of the Temple of Mnemosyne. Why is it glowing more now than it was before? And you hear a sort of gleeful chuckle from inside from Orda. It is as though... It is as though we are connected once more to the great record. <laughs> I can feel... The stories are coming back to me. Clark, make a perception check. Sure. I'd love to. A whopping 14. Okay. All right. Um, Is the bag still a one piece? Oh, yes. Whew. Excellent. It's a bit rough around the seams, but it's holding. Excellent. So you do have it here, then. You hear the voice of Erasics. Mm -hmm. Good. Arkazics, pardon me. Good. That simplifies things. I had worried that we would have to travel for it, too. My lord wishes to speak to you. And to have the return of his prize. Understood. I can't make this uh, this decision by myself, but I had considered. Do you this speak to for be... them? Speak for me. May I make an insight check? Sure. What are you trying it to is insight? A group decision. Um, I I want to like see if she's telling the truth. She's not like leading us into a trap. Okay. Uh, oh, it's a trap. It's definitely a trap. Uh, <laughs> that is a 16. 16? It's hard to read. Um, she has a very flat tone, and she sounds very annoyed. Um, you are the master of yourself. Good. I speak for myself. Uh, less good. Who then speaks for all of you? We, we usually come to an agreement, us and the rest of our friends. <sighs> I see. Uh, How long will it take for the rest of your friends to get here? Uh, I don't know. If they are listening, they may be around <laughs> shortly. <coughs> if they are not listening, then who knows? We do not have much time. Things are happening. Which, what kind of things? Arvax will make his move soon. Do you know what, it, what his move will be? Devastating. 
So that I have no doubt. Uh, I wish my lord's position to be returned. I seek nothing other than that. As do I. Clark would like to look at this creature through his bad eye and, and focus on its form. Okay. Um, remind me of the effect you're looking for? <laughs> nothing specific. Okay. It's all, Dust it's all just, he's just trying so, to get an idea of what it looks like under a, gla a glassy gray right, eye. Right, right. So part of the effect that happened with that eye before, as you had seen and kind of understood the scars mm. uh, that had manifested, you would see the physical ones normally, but this would allow you a little bit more insight. Uh, in her, uh, there are no scars. Uh, and in fact, when you kind of take a closer look and peer through your bad eye, um, it almost overwhelms you. There's a sense of not perfection, but almost perfection. Um, almost angelic so in form. An avatar of some kind, probably. It would be a reasonable guess. Okay. Um, this seems to be a messenger at the very least, but much, much more than that. Clark will turn to Zacchaeus and say, I have concerns. As do I, but our backs may be a great concern. We could at least hear her out. Don't worry, I won't make any rash decisions. Oh, if go you ahead. don't. Go, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm at an impasse. Ar Archaesix, how does Pichiro's position return? How can you restore him to his old self? From what I've only read about. This is what you must discuss with him. I've heard he was after these pillars. How can this one pillar restore him if there's multiple pillars scattered about? She seems, she kind of sighs with impatience uh, as if, you know, explaining herself to you and explaining all of this is beneath her. But at the same time, she does kind of clear her, clear her throat, almost as though... <sighs> You I'm a messenger. A <laughs> I've actually got to tell them things. This is my job. This is my job now. <laughs> um, those are the very essence of him and need to be returned for him to live. I do not understand it, but this is what I know. I have seen it before. They manifest in him power once again, and he holds power strongly for a time. But I am not privileged to know all of his thoughts. Would that I could. I follow his orders. Hmm? Do you think we would be? He has asked for you, and I am tasked with bringing you to him. How did he hear about us? This is his place. He oh. hears all. He sees all. I suppose those big eyeballs in the sky would have picked up our presence. Um, and she kind of looks over. They are his vision. If we retrieve the pillar, can you guarantee that we wouldn't be attacked on the way? Or can you send us there in the blink of an eye? The land is under siege, and much fighting is going on. But I can give you guidance. Guidance and protection, or only guidance? <sighs> and protection. <laughs> After a deep sigh. I suppose we only have to... There's a I whistling mean, of a wind as it passes right by you. <laughs> is it Alzero? Oh. Nope. Nope. Make a perception check. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. 17. 17? You only catch it for a second, and there's this sort of crazed and upset look on Radix's face as she passes right by you, but seems not to stop for you, and seems to spin around the building uh, until she's standing, floating in front of you, still in her wispy form, mm -hmm. gesturing but, and also trying to say something, but apparently not able to say anything and not really realizing that was part of what she was doing. Uh, where is she gesturing to? Gesturing to you. To me. She's kind of flown around. She kind of saw a, a, a glimpse of you, specifically you going to, not the two of them, and kind of darting around this strange creature. Um, but now, where whereabouts are you exactly? Like They're still in the back. The, in yeah. The so she circled very quickly in that form. You can travel extraordinarily yeah. fast, uh, and then kind of found you to, to hover and excitedly is, is saying something. There's a concern on her face, but it's hard to uh, to read. Uh, I'll go. Focus on me. Make a persuasion check. Uh oh oh oh. No. Okay. Five. 
for the moment she still seems to be too caught up in her own words and is, is it reaches out at one point to try to to grab you by the shoulders and shakes you and just the hands kind of float up float upside inside you she looks at her own hands and is just sort of gesturing wildly and then like you can't quite interpret why solid <laughs> okay did I notice any of this? Because I, I you you saw it. you saw the wisp. And you saw it dart around okay. the side of the building, um, but didn't really stop for you. Other than there, there was that sort of freeze frame you get effect that sometimes in movies, as this quick thing moves through, and you got like look, a, a glimpse of her face, kind of like distraught, and then she's moved on already. Because if, effectively, three hundred feet per round, you're a speedster at that yeah. point. So, um, hmm. And she kind of looks at you, nods, <laughs> and you can see her kind of looking like she's trying to hold her breath. <laughs> And then not quite sure of it, and then grasp, grab, grabbing her, her hands, and then closing her eyes and putting her head down. Um, but that minute passes slowly. Meanwhile, out front. Well, I think it's worth hearing him out. We will take our offering, whether we want to give it to him or not. That's what I'm kind of worried about. But if he knows we're here, it is his to do with as he wishes. He is supposed to grant us a favor in exchange, according to what we've heard. He could just send us home. We wouldn't have to play a uh, hole in the sky roulette. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, that the thing. Clark would like to take a moment and flip the coin. Okay. Uh, over the issue, in his head. In his head, okay. Well, he'll physically flip a coin, but he's going to be thinking A or B. Okay. All right, then. Um, Clark uh, flips dragon. Okay. And decides, right. And he turns to order and says, I need access. Um, okay. And he concentrates for a second. You're welcome, friend Clark. Clark will yeah, in, pass, in, pass through that, that strange wobbly barrier once more and find yourself on the inside. Remember, it's, uh, it's maze-like in there. It feels... That, that sort of sense of, of the humming that you were getting as you were getting closer feels even more strong. And what's the strangest of all is the fact that it's brighter on the inside than it was on the outside. Mm -hmm. In other words, while you would expect as you move into a dim hallway it to be dim, there are no shadows here. It's almost difficult to find the edges of the building itself. Uh, something you've seen a little bit as you got deeper into the temple last time, but is now right at the very surface of the temple. Clark will sneeze. Okay. <laughs> Cover his eyes. All right. Try to find his way to the bag. Okay. So you start to wander through. Um, meanwhile, you're kind of standing there looking at her, and she's looking impatient at you and back at Orda. I think he's going to fetch the package. I hope so. My time should not be wasted on waiting. And you get that sense again that she's probably been here for a while uh, yeah. as well. So uh, for how long have you been here? Waiting. Time has no meaning here. It's even more meaningless when wasted. Well, I don't disagree. Anyway, he'll come back shortly. Uh, Orda, if you just go in and get him, if he gets lost, which... Oh, I'm sure he'll get lost very quickly. <laughs> it's what's meant to happen. <laughs> uh, he seems, again, kind of happy and kind of jolly and unconcerned about the things. And as you stand a little bit closer to this strange creature, you get the sense of... of power that she exudes, that she's not just a messenger. Um, but she has shown no malice toward you, at least at this point. Do you know what Arvax is planning? No. Baturo has told me little, and I have not been able to scout in that direction. I have been busy looking for all of you. You well, have moved. That's the first part of the mission accomplished? Yes. You've done have, something. <laughs> we have faced this call to back in Vatur over a year ago. Arvax, that is. I do not know of this place. Okay. Well, maybe you can visit sometime. That Zach would be delightful. Tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the back, Radix has managed to finally calm herself enough. And the first word that she says is... They're coming. At least five of them. And that's where we're going to pause for a moment. Meanwhile... Commercial break. Meanwhile, in Vatudren.
time is work. Time is energy. Time is spent making that energy into the dream you've had, Amrin. The building that was given to you needed some work. It needed a lot of energy. But the dream was still solid. And the dream is what you were able to express to your followers and to tell them this was meaningful, despite some complaints and some splinters and some, uh, well, broken thumbs from a bad hammer placement. You've managed to get them, your followers, hard at work. You hired someone to help with it. You needed it. Um, there were just questions you had about the way this building was built. They scoffed and said, ah, they shouldn't have done it that way. Which you get the feeling that they've said every time they've been in a building site, they shouldn't have done it that way. But after about uh, four or five days, seems like most of the holes in the roof have been sealed up. At least when it rained, it didn't seem to pour inside anymore. Not that you kind of minded, because the water itself seems to remind you of Paluxia. But it did make for rather damp accommodations inside. Mm. After a few more days and the wind picks up, you start to find all the holes in the walls and patch those as well. You've been attracting some curious onlookers during this time. Councilman Woodcombe dropped by, Alistair, to see how it was going, to give you some positive reinforcement, to let you know that he's very happy to see what you're developing here and wishes you the best. I thank him. More surprising, perhaps, and saying much less, is the Namazni priestess, Nizana Vahana, who drops by. She inspects things, looking around, nodding to herself. Again, not saying all that much. Um, well, thank her for her visit. But she, she turns to you and looks seriously at you for a moment. You will do good here. I hope so. Our memories will record this. I nod. And she kind of leaves almost as, as silently as she came in. Meanwhile, one of your grand tasks has begun. A bit of time set aside each day, away from the curious questions of all of the people who've come, away from the followers who keep coming back to you wanting to be told what to do, wanting to be instructed. A little bit less every day. And then you come to realize that taking a sort of lieutenant role, Catherine has been trying to organize them a little bit and spending time with them, which worries you somewhat, but you're not quite sure what the plan is. But that great work that you've want, wanted to do, the central part of this temple, a statue, a uh, fountain, a replication of the great fountain that you had found in the temple uh, beneath the stone, the serene temple, but on a somewhat more modest scale, at least to start with. Each day, taking some time to meditate on the vision of Philoxy that you have, how you believe she should look, how you would like to pose her, is it a strict replica of the pose that she had there with the open hands and the, the water to be flowing from it, or...? No, it's the uh, one I... picture I showed you where basically she's holding on to like almost like a circular disc. Okay. Uh, that the water then comes out of. Okay. So each day, uh, working a little bit away at this, let's have a performance check mm. to sort of assess yeah. as you take some time to slowly sculpt the stone. A little bit at a time. No, I should have used the other one. <laughs> that one's nice a nine. Point. Okay. It's difficult, it's crude. While you know the effect That's you're right. going for, and you have the power to move the stone as you will, um, the first few days, while you carve off the right shape, you're still having difficult with difficulty capturing the essence. Um, maybe it is, you might think to yourself a little bit, the fact that you're trying to capture the essence of a god, an almost indescribable being. Or when you're in your more realistic moments, 
I am just a crappy you artist. You just haven't done this before. And it's going to take a lot more work than you expected. Um, after a couple of days, you, well, about four or five days, you um, start to step back from everything and think, huh, I haven't uh, heard from Elzara recently. She was starting that project to try to renovate a grove, mm. an old grove. After asking around for a while, no one seems to have heard from her. It doesn't take you too much to find the space itself. In fact, a, a small trip to Alistair himself will let you know exactly where it was. He was the one that helped arrange for that to exist. And everyone was very nosy. And he's absolutely very nosy. Uh, and you find the proper estate, at least the one you think it's supposed to be. Uh, it's still very large walls around it, but the gates are somewhat ajar. There's lots of plants. This is a good start. place. It, it's, it's overgrown and... Um, it looks as though a tornado ripped through here, as large trees seem to have uprooted and uh, some sort of scuffle with the dirt itself overturned. Some of the what were remaining of the outbuildings had been crushed. Uh, the main building itself looks like it had been crushed a long, long time ago, but now seems even more sunken in than it had before. Um, the only druid thing I've been to is the moot, so... This might just be renovations. Uh, I will. I'm gonna call around and see if I can find her. Okay. Make an investigation check. There we go. Nineteen. As you look around, it becomes more and more apparent that there was some sort of fight here. Uh, you even find uh, traces of dried blood in a couple of places, uh, and the mm. trees that you would presume were uprooted. Uh, seem almost to have a humanoid aspect to them uh, and have fallen across the top of the mansion um, almost as though they were trying to crush inward on it. You find a small uh, uh, opening in the back of the mansion uh, where it looks like some stone had fallen in revealing a basement that's still there. Hmm. Have I found the spot that Elzera was living in here? I'm assuming that she was living. I don't think she actually had a chance to set up spot, camp, but um, I don't know. I was uh, there for two days. As and... you as you look around, you don't find any evidence mm. of a campsite. Hmm. At that point, hopefully she'll forgive the interruption. I am going to send a sending to. I don't remember her name. Her cousin that was his boss. Miley. Oh, Miley. Miley. That's yep. it. Okay. And just say, uh, pardon me. Uh, Miley. Does she have a rank name? She, uh, she yes, she was a, a the Meister, Submeister of Archiving, if I recall correctly. Yes. Okay. I'll say, uh, uh, my apologies, Submeister uh, Miley. Uh, this is. Uh, Amrin Elisar, have you seen uh, Elzera recently? There appears to have been a scuffle at her druid spot. Okay. Um, the response comes back quickly. Ah, it is good to hear from you. No, I have not seen my cousin in some time. I thought she went back to her cabin. Not a bad assumption. <laughs> mm. It is a default for all Elzera to do. Yeah. Yeah, well, she also has, uh, she was staying with one of her cousins there for a while. Yeah, but mm. she's currently seeing someone. Yeah, mostly when, uh, when she was during recovery and before mm. Adrian got involved. I'll send another sending back saying, uh, I can't reach her. I, I, I'm assuming I've tried. You would have tried before, ascending yeah. and no response to Elzera. Yeah. Uh, I, no signal. I can't get a... I can't find her with ascending. And it, I mean, it looks like there was some fighting here. There's Do you know where she was staying? A worried response that comes back. Oh, no. I... I haven't seen her in a while. I... I 
Do you think something bad has happened to her? I don't know. Uh, I would hope not. Uh, just before I go delving in here, I wanted to see if maybe she was at... I'll just, I'm, I can cast this like seven times a day, mm -hmm. so I'll just keep chatting. Um, uh, before I go checking too much further, I just wanted to make sure that she wasn't just hanging out at the library or something. Um, there's a pause and then a response. No, I haven't seen her in a while. And I sort of thought that Zacchaeus was with her. I haven't seen him for a while either. He's missing as well? I have not seen him. <laughs> Granted, Emerald demanded that he not hang out with me any further, so I thought that was normal. Perhaps something <laughs> happened here. Um, uh, I will look around and let you know what I find out. Please, if there's anything I can do for my cousin or for my uh, protege, let me know. I, I had gotten used to him disappearing, hmm. but not like this. Never like this. Um, Make an insight check. Well, that's a 10. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You heard what you heard. Um, hmm. I am going to cast... Um, uh, Oops. Greater that dice. dice. Yeah, that probably sounded nice on the way. <laughs> um, that's a thunder strike. Mm, uh, locate object. Okay. What are you trying to locate? Uh, I had left her with a bag of stuff. And I'm going to see if I can find the bag. It's got like a thousand foot range. Okay. Uh, so basically just, if it's here, he'll probably sense it, but... Uh, I believe we had, had established that I did not have the bag of stuff with me. Yeah, yeah. So, that makes that you had left it behind. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm, I'm just making sure that... Yeah. It is known it is not on me. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was left behind. Okay. Uh, as you draw in the, the, the power and take the moment to fix in your mind what you're looking for and feeling something which has been growing stronger in you for a while, this sense almost as you cast this divine magic and call upon the very life essence of Paluxia, almost as though you were stepping underneath a waterfall and you can feel that energy sort of vibrate and move down through your through your spine and it's it's sort of exhilarating and calming at the same time and as you focus on it the answer comes to you it's about 50 feet that way towards the building itself okay actually where did Elzara leave it I was presuming you left it there because I mean, if she was working, she probably had like a little yeah setup that she had. Anyways, if she wasn't staying, here. it would either be in some where I would keep my work stuff in the grove, or at um, the councilwoman's house. Okay, because let's that's say, where I was staying. Let's say it's further than it's towards. It's in the crushed outbuildings that are outside, okay. where you would have left it to keep it out of the elements. So okay. not far away. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll go over and check there, uh, see if, like, if that's there, I'll pick it up and if there's, check if there's anything else. It takes you a moment because there. the building itself has been crushed inward. Hmm, that's uh, not a it good sign. probably wasn't before, uh, but the bag seems undisturbed and just sort of sitting there. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll pick it up. Is there anything, any other sign of her in this building? As you look around, you see what probably are scuff marks from someone standing mm. or walking around. Nothing mm. in particular. Well. Um, I'll assume we've got like one sending left. Okay. Uh, and I'll send to Miley. Um, I found some stuff I'd left with her. 
uh, I'm going to check in the ruins of the house if I disappear or if you don't hear from me then that may be where she disappeared as well okay um, she sends back now you have me worried I hope that she's alright if there's anything I can do let me know Those are my last ones, really. Okay. Uh, and yeah, he'll go. He'll uh, find that hole into the house again that he saw. Okay. And start careful. Actually, first, he's going back to the church and he's picking up his adventuring gear because he doesn't know what's going to happen. <laughs> because he doesn't want to be stuck like us. <laughs> this He doesn't want the house. Well, if the house collapses, he's going to need some way to survive for a while and whatnot. So he's just getting all of his old comfort stuff for okay. adventuring. Um, uh, and one, and his armor as well. There's some, some looks as you kind of go back and there's some questions that come up to you yeah. as you're walking in. Uh, Otnell, um, the, uh, the one who kind of wore yeah, the robes Chris, before, yeah. uh, kind of looks at you but then thinks better well, of asking I, his question. Well, yeah. I will talk to them. Uh, well, he he kind of looks I've... at the sort of the the, the can do yeah. attitude you have at the moment. If you just, I'm not going to interrupt. Um, you find uh, uh, Catherine and Galen Galen Stevens, who is the merchant's son, uh, whispering to each other quickly over in one corner, uh, and who kind of stop noticeably as you pass by. Uh, Catherine just sort of smiles and waves, and Galen looks satisfied, smugly almost. Ah, uh, hello, Catherine, Galen. Uh, you look happy. Uh, he begins to answer, and then Catherine kind of interjects, "You look like you're busy, going somewhere." Hmm. Thinking about it, then he doesn't say, uh, "Having second thoughts." So crap what do I do well just um, know that this way will be all in good hands your people are doing very well aren't we all and she kind of realizes her slip and Galen doesn't seem to notice uh, by the way says Catherine what title did you ever choose for yourself I mean I'm happy with calling you Amrud and so would Galen and the others but it sort of feels like we should have some sort of official name for you. I actually did some thinking about that, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> um, Memory rake. Emlyn is good enough as it is. Well, as you wish. Once we're more established, we may think about such things. We'll we'll put our minds to it and see if we have suggestions, right, Galen? Oh yeah, I'll be thinking about it. I make an insight check. Sure. On what? On them acting somewhat suspiciously. <laughs> mm, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I know about Catherine. Mm -hmm. I'm always suspicious of her. Mm -hmm. Just um, a fact. <laughs> yeah. And you also know that she likes to feed into that to keep you off your off your toes. Mm-hmm. Natural one. Natural one. Oh, yeah. um, no, things are good. No, it's not that. It's more of, um, I th think Galen's in love, and Catherine seems to be okay with this. That's, well, yeah. Dude does not deserve to get eaten in his sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, we'll talk about this later. Uh, I have uh, some things to uh, think over. Oh, of course. We want to keep you from some important business. Um, he will get his stuff packed up, but he's okay. going to go out to where the the, uh, the statue and fountain is being worked on. Okay. As you turn to leave your room, standing in the doorway um, is... In her usual uh, garb, uh, Excellence, the tiefling, showed up in 
uh, kind of uh, almost half blight. Mm. You get the impression that she inherited more than she bought. Uh, but she's standing there and she has a puzzled look on her face. I have questions. Follow me. Will there be answers? Hopefully. And she turns and follows you. What are your questions? I do not understand this. What in particular? And she takes a big breath. I do not understand any of it. How are we to follow uh, a, a being that does not tell us what to follow? How are we to know if what we do is right? How are we to... And she starts laying off of like the, the top ten theological questions a newcomer has. And uh, it's clear that she's frustrated and very confused. Well, uh, I say to her, a lot of those are going to require a lot more discussion. But yes, I'm ready. Uh, yes, uh, perhaps that should wait until some point when we can all get together. I suspect many people have these questions. She looks a little sad. They do not seem to have as many questions as I do. But the first thing I think that you need to think about is you want to know what we should do, correct? Yes. Knowledge is the opposite of belief. Oh. We do... N I do what I do because I know it is right. And you have knowledge. Yes. But I believe it is what Paluxia wants me to do. I do not know. All we can do is do what we believe she wants us to do. But how do we know it if we have to believe it and we cannot know it? Well, my own personal thoughts on the matter are that if we were doing something she didn't want, or at least if I was doing something she didn't want, she probably would not let me continue doing these things. Ah. So she will stop you from doing bad? I believe so, but I don't know. Hmm. That is... You know... You see maybe some of the wizards around. Uh, I have seen some. Couple. Wizardry is... the practice of gaining knowledge. Ah. Wizards don't believe, they know. So they are unholy beings? No. Unholiness is not knowledge. Unholiness is evil. Uh, unholiness is also often practiced when you follow, uh, if, uh, for those who follow belief, but only those who are evil. Uh, knowledge and belief are not separate. They're simply different. To follow... But one can, cannot have one if one has the other. So they must be different opposite they are in the Venn diagrams of the universe they're not circles that mix no you there can are have circles yes you can have knowledge and you can have belief but you are correct not about the same thing once you know you don't need to believe you get the sense that she's earnest in trying to understand but she's having a real hard time and mm -hmm. seems apprehensive um, almost as though she's a little bit shaken and you realize that it's going to take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, dang it, if only I can remember his name. Um, you thinking of Damon? Nope. Uh, nope, nope. I, I'll get it now. Um, there are things I have to do right now. I'm working, of course, on the circle and trying to bring uh, Damon ask here he is far more experienced with these questions than I am I like your but, statue it is not finished no. but it weeps and you stop you haven't quite made it the statue because the questions have been going on but as you pause for a moment you hear the sound of running water cool. 
I will leave you with these words. You're leaving me? Uh, not at the moment, but uh, just um, please uh, listen first, question later. In the words of the great sage Farron, you sometimes have to learn not to worry, just to be happy. And you see her kind of staring off in the middle distance, trying to memorize these words. And she looks up to ask a question, kind of rips her t jaw tightly closed, looks back, focuses on those words again. Also, perhaps a nice hot bath would do you good. Something relaxing. If you, if you're, sometimes if you're trying too hard, you need to relax and try less. There's a, a look of delight that comes on her face when you mention hot bath, and she kind of, uh, you know, smiles a bit, raises her finger as if to ask something, closes her, hand, her mouth again, and nod, uh, raises a thumb awkwardly, uh, and then turns and, and walks away. Uh, you can see her kind of stalking almost directly towards uh, you have some sort of communal bath, I suppose. There is running water something, in buildings in these in this area. Yeah, so. it used to be an inn, so there'd be something there. But yeah. uh, wh how hot it gets, it's up to how much work they want to spend. Yeah. Um, Most of them would be fire uh, boilers, essentially. Uh, yeah. So, she's left you for the moment. Yes, I'm going to Try to find the source of the sound of running water. Okay. After a second or two, while you fear maybe it's yet another leak or something else going wrong, you go out to the central plaza where the unfinished statue is, and it does appear that the statue itself is weeping. Rivulets of water ra race down it. Not a lot. Um, more than more than uh, more than a little bit less than a lot uh, enough that it's a continuous sort of stream that's going down it looks like heavy tears at this particular point uh, but it's in, it begins to drip down and, and pool a little bit around the statue this means something I'm hoping it means something good um, I'm going to commune Okay. I, uh, I'm at the fountain, so I assume that... I think it still had, like, a roundish area for water. There'd be something for um, water to pool, yeah. I'm going to go over to one of the pools and just meditate on the pool. And uh, hopefully commune is the right spell. When I'm mm, thinking that's of. where you ask your deity for some answers. Mm. While you think of your questions, why don't we take a break? And then we'll come sure. back and we'll pick up from there. So we will be back in uh, 15 to a half an hour. Okay. I don't know how much time we do, but that's where we'll start. So. Wait for it. Wait for it. Did I hit the button? I think I hit the button. I don't know how it goes so fast this time. It's like I hit the button and things happen. Hey. For those of you watching on YouTube, nothing just happened. It's the miracle of TV brought to you over the internet. Uh, we will continue. Uh, we are still in Vatterdren, uh, catching up with uh, an old friend who hasn't been seen for some time. Amrun, standing before the statue of the goddess Paluxia, the one that he has been working on, not quite finished yet, but has displayed this miraculous feature. Not unlike the feature you had seen on the temple in uh, the Serene Temple, where the statue seems to weep. And you sit in quiet, nearby the water that's gathered, and you begin to think towards your goddess. Casting okay. commune, you yep. ask her. Uh, yes. Uh, I say, Plexia, please give me your guidance for the casting of the spell. You feel that same um, familiar trickle almost of water down your spine. It's exhilarating once more. And you can feel her presence with you. OK. 
Okay, I got three yes and no questions. Um, Lady Paluxia, are my former adventuring companions in trouble? No. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go back to work then. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> they were. You feel as though you are washed over by a tide. Like you were standing in a great river as its water flowed heavily, rushing in where once there had been nothing. It almost overwhelms you and you feel yourself having to kind of brace a little bit to keep from falling over the in the water you see familiar faces you see Elzera you see Zakis you see Clark <laughs> not in that form they see, you see them in their pristine forms but they seem to be in the river and the river flows quickly. They fight against the current and yet are slowly losing. That is your answer. I believe that's a no. Or wait. Now, I asked if my friends were in trouble. I believe that's a yes. Um, okay. After all, it's not about knowing, it's about believing. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> uh, are my friends. On this plane, hmm. the sense of the river flowing once again surrounds you, and now you feel yourself carried by it gently, but carried. Ahead, you can see a, the dark, angular feature of a rock that divides the stream in two. And you see yourself, strangely out of body, floating gently down one stream, while in the other direction, the water grows choppier and colder and grayer. And that is the direction in which your friends have traveled. That I don't know. Okay. Um... You get the sense that the path that you are following and the place that you are is not where they have gone. Mm. Lastly, mother to us all, do I need to get rid of Catherine? Hmm. This time, you do not have the sensation of a river. You feel one little prick, and then another small little touch, and then another and another heavily and growing stronger and colder. And then you feel, you not see, you not hear, but you feel the sensations of snow one flake at a time, accumulating more and more. And then the cold grows stronger. And you feel the weight of the snow burying you heavier and deeper. The weight becomes suffocating. Despite the fact that you know the pure essence around you is pure and welcoming, it is as though it is misplaced. It is as though it has turned and been changed and been corrupted. And when, while sitting there you begin to shiver and you feel, you feel cold and isolated. Catherine walks up to you and offers you her hand. 
Are you okay? Do you need any help? Is this in the vision thing? Or out At of first, you thing? think it is, but then you realize no, Catherine really is standing before you, looking concerned. I am fine. She kind of withdraws the hand when you don't take it. Oh, you looked strange. I was communing with the mother. Ah, well, and she looks up at the statue. She must have heard you. That doesn't happen every day. I look up, is it still crying or is it something different? No, it's still weeping like it was before. Mm. That's probably a good sign. I think so. Maybe you're onto something. Well, I'll leave you alone. So much to do around here. Idle hands and all. Mm. You do not need to do so much. You are oh. not one of us. Oh, you wound me. You have not joined. It maybe I have Maybe I have not said the words, but I am here. The words are important. To some. Words can be very, very important. I choose very carefully which words I say. Sometimes that will leave you out of things. Tragedy it is my life. Well, I go back to uh, meditating because I've still got one more thing that I need to, to do. Okay. As I uh, reach out to Palexia and again pray for uh, for uh, Damon Triesk Triesk? Yes, mm -hmm. Triesk um, to be allowed to be here Okay I have a really low chance of that happening Roll percentile 63 Nope um, As the cold from the previous vision still lingers a little bit longer um, you find yourself reaching out for Poluxia but a little distracted by Catherine's presence almost as though somehow she knew at that moment to be there or was that the goddess sending you a message was it sending her a message and these thoughts kind of spin and swirl and unfortunately uh, distract you from making that true connection uh, but still the miracle sits before you of this weeping statue and that can't be all bad mm. I think just the rest of the day I'm going to talk to the rest of the members and just see how they're doing uh, what they think of Catherine, uh, especially since she has not taken the vows that they have. And that'll basically be it, because everyone's got to figure out how he can get to his friends without leaving all these people. Okay. I presume you go back to your rooms and... and take off the armor or the adventure gear. Yeah, yeah. Right? So he, yeah, he wouldn't have actually put on the armor. He just would have gone and packed it up instead. Okay. Uh, and you gather people ready. together. They, they're used to kind of being gathered together at different times. You've probably given yeah. a few attempts at lectures anyway and trying to oh, inform yeah. them. And they would even call for it. In particular, yeah. uh, Excellence would. Although you don't find her there. You presume that she's off yeah. uh, communing. Um, the the talking to them he just does while they're in small groups around, okay. while he's checking on, on what Mo I mean there aren't a lot of people here who have been here on a regular basis uh, there's basically seven uh, primary people that have been mm -hmm. here for a while yeah um, they're the ones who are act who have actually taken the vows right and, and there's a bit of, there, but there's been a couple of dozen that have come through and have been interested and sat and talked with some of them um, for the most part. Uh, from uh, Galen, um, he seems to be sincere. You know, he's he's uh, thrilled to be with the church. He's having fine. It's nothing's wrong. It's a little dull at times, but you know, a little hard work didn't kill anybody. They tell me. Um, 
The two hardest working are Taylor and Urena, the brother and sister. Uh, they seem very accustomed to hard work. Um, their father, I believe, was a either a horseman or a saddle maker. I, I forgot. I think that was um, a sword guy. Or maybe that was the sword maker. Yeah. Let me just double yeah. check here. Uh, yes, sorry. The uh, sword maker's son and daughter. But they, they grew up around the hard work that her father did. And, and while they didn't take up the trade, they, they seem accustomed to it and generally quite quite happy to be here. They have a lot of questions, not entirely dissimilar to excellences, although mm -hmm. a little less uh, a little less uh, broad and open. Uh, but they've also met a lot of people here and kind of know that people are starting to understand. And yeah, I mean, in the evenings, he does have like talk with them and whatnot. He just isn't an expert on this sort of thing. Uh, Breda, however, um, who has always been a bit of a a sort of Prissy should have been a noble, at least Tasker, and she'll tell you she should have been a noble, uh, does say sadly that she will be leaving. Um, she still believes, as she describes it, in the in your grand adventure, uh, and uh, will love to be thrilled to hear more about it. But I don't think this is for me. Uh, and decides to spend more time in the town. In fact, um, the others do point out that Breda has done almost no work whatsoever so far. Yeah. Conveniently finds herself somewhere else in the city usually when the work needs to be done. Uh, and even after she leaves, uh, you find that she has spent more time with nobles. Uh, it seems mm. to be making a bit of a, a, a move in that direction. Was she one who had taken vows? She had taken vows, but okay. she's stepping back from all of that. Then and you I'll feel do a, Then I'll do a ceremonial... Uh, sort of uh, breaking of their connection, basically saying I, that uh, this is not a life for everyone, uh, and uh, Breda has decided that her adventure lies elsewhere, uh, and make sure that it's like, this is not a, a bad thing or anything. Uh, it's just but, a different path. Yep. Yeah. Uh, just... Uh, <laughs> Well, they're they're polite about we it. Uh, the rest don't seem to be all that concerned about mm -hmm. her leaving. Um, she was a little irritating. You get you gather to the rest of them. Um, the one, however, with the most different response is Otnell, who finally seems to have worked up the courage once you kind of, uh, well, more or less corner him, and ask him how he's doing. Um, he frowns and tells you, "I, I." I need to go to work at the library. Okay. Um, Otnell, Otnell? He, uh, yeah. Uh, no, Hafnell. No, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I say, His brother is actually in the quaint. He was another okay. one of the ones that was yeah. there as well. I say, uh, yes, uh, you had mentioned an interest before. I will I continue to chronicle things before. as best as I can, and I still believe in you and in her, but I, I don't feel that I can do as much here as I need to. No, and I don't think you will find acceptance there as a member of our church. It did come up. Um, but uh, no, everyone must find their own way. Uh, if I could put in a good word for you there, I would, but my word probably would be best left away. Um, so no, I will again do the same. Sorry. It's not necessarily like that much of a public ceremony just go into the church and basically get them to, uh, they would at some point have to say that they are leaving mm -hmm. the, the church and i'm assuming like, you gather the followers who were there as well right? yeah yeah i'd say uh, i mean for one at least so the very least so that they know uh, and that they know that this is an option uh, unlike when breda left there are actual tears uh in particular from excellence uh who seems completely bewildered by his choice uh, doesn't understand it at all and kind of keeps begging for him to stay um, but he kind of shyly insists that he has to do that uh, Taylor and Urena both embrace him like family hmm. um, I tell him that he's welcome to come back here whenever he wishes as long as it will not make it harder for him at, at the library I will, I will, I will be back uh, when I can um, good and uh I mean, I'll make sure that he's... Actually, I'll say he can continue living here until he finds a place in the library to live, so that's not a problem. They've offered me a space to live there. Good. He seems very shy about it, but very appreciative of your of your grace. Uh, look out for Zacchaeus. Uh, 
That's not a warning. That's a, a, they look for. <laughs> Physically look for him, please. Uh, <laughs> he can probably help you out there. Thank you. Uh, I will. Don't mention the p word. We're not allowed. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. and yeah, I'll give him like a clap on the shoulder and say it's uh, good luck in your endeavors. He seems remarkably thin under the robes. The robes hide a lot of it, but you kind of get the impression that he's going to have a hard time lifting some of the books, let alone uh, anything he's going to do here. But he's been he's been eager uh, to work, if not necessarily that skilled. Yeah, uh, he would be the one who had the uh, the broken thumb from trying to hammer a nail and missing. So a couple more days pass um, as the, 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 the group that you had assembled shifts somewhat slightly uh, and you struggle to find a way or try to think of a way to change things. Probably keeping some of your daily activities like going back to the statue and continuing mm -hmm. to work and, and sculpt on it. Yeah, well, and he keeps trying each day just to... Uh... Uh, to ask for divine intervention on uh, Damon's behalf. Mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, third day of doing that, um, and you've been... It's... I don't know if frustration would necessarily settle into Amrun. He understands that this is not necessarily a small thing yeah. that he asks, but um, he knows still, it's take time. still uh, the routine is settled in, and the it's almost meditative to do this, uh, kind of like the daily... The daily uh, request for for oh, he would have messaged Miley and let her know that he hasn't gone into the house yet. He's, okay, he's had some delays. Okay, uh, she'd just tell you that she has not heard anything more and starting to worry. Um, on the third day, you are meditating, and the stream of water has continued at the same pace, hasn't increased or reduced. At this point, you also see a moon overhead. Uh, glowing quite quite brightly. The other one has not woken up yet. Um, and you hear footsteps. Is it daylight or uh, early night? Time. Night time. Okay. It'd be basically after everybody else has finally you know stopped asking you questions and can leave you alone for a while. Um, you hear footsteps. Rapid footsteps coming closer. Mm, if that's all I hear, he'll. He'll still be just focusing on uh, on the prayers and molding things for the statue and whatnot. Okay. Uh, but uh, his adventurer senses are still the way. It's like, if, do I hear the blade being drawn? Do I hear something else? Um, um, the steps are certain. Uh, they're rapid, but not running. They feel confident, and within a few seconds, you hear on the edge of the inner courtyard, I knew you would be here. It's the voice of Zinzalor. We've not spoken to for a while, the, the acolyte mm -hmm. at the Namazani Temple. I will uh, quickly finish up and stand up and say, yeah. hello, Zinzalor. Uh, you've done quite a bit with the place. I'm sorry that I hadn't visited before. But the pathways I tread are not decided only by me. Mm. Understand or understandable. Um, how may I help you? Well, to be honest, I think we can help you. I don't know exactly all of the details. It's not surprising. It's the way that we work after all. Mm. But the priestess Fahana told me to find you and that it was urgent, and that it was a matter of your friends. Is this urgent by minutes, or is this she needs to talk and I can prepare for stuff afterwards? Uh, <laughs> I've been an acolyte of the temple for a long time, and still I find these things difficult to interpret. Time in particular often is uh, tricky. But I did get a sense of urgency. Okay. Uh, then uh, I will need a few minutes. Uh, I go and pick up the stuff that I've packed up. Okay. And, uh, um, he'll probably put on the major pieces of the armor, and just the rest will be in the bag. Uh, 
Uh, and, uh, and yeah, he'll grab the shield and the, the, um, staff? Nah, he'll leave that. Nah, he'll leave the, that. There's a little too much to carry around right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, he'll just grab the shield and the rest of his stuff and, um, he will let, hmm. Um, who else is up right now? Because he's not just going to leave them. Um, are you going to go looking for people? Yeah. Uh, you would find uh, Taylor and Urena are talking uh, in one of the inner inner rooms by the fire. Um, I walk in and uh, tell them that uh, the uh, the priestess of uh, Nemozny has. Uh, asked me to come by is about some people I know. Uh, it's possible I may be gone for a short period. I don't know. Is there uh, something wrong? Irena asks. I hope not. But I haven't been able to contact them. Um, is there anything we can do? Says Taylor. Uh, look after the church. Continue doing the work that we're doing here. Um... Keep make paying attention to uh, make an inside check. Twenty four. Um, there's a look that passes between the two of them. Uh, it's one of those looks that brothers and sisters often have. That hidden language that family is close to you has, uh, but it it conveys to you that there's something they'd like to tell you, but they're hesitant. What is it? My apologies. I normally would like to just leave this to uh, whenever you wish to talk about it, but uh, if there's something going on, I have to know now. Again, the sort of look passes between them, and there's a sort of unstated decision uh, as Urena kind of shakes her head. We're worried about Galen. Mm -hmm. We don't have any proof or anything, but... A couple of nights he was gone, and he came back in really late. I think he felt like he'd just slip in and nobody would notice, but Taylor's a light sleeper sometimes. I am not. It's true. It's true. Hmm. Once or twice. It, it, it's hard for me to sleep. I, I, regardless, he had a very large bag of coin with him, far more than any of us have accumulated here. I don't know why he had it. But it just seemed strange. And hmm. I don't know, the way he talks to some of the other people who come to the temple, he could just be a, a merchant's son. That's true. And maybe he senses a, an opportunity that we aren't seeing, but it sounds as though he's trying to sell indulgences or something. Prayers for money. Hmm. Technically, we can make scrolls for prayers and sell them, but th I don't think that's the same thing. Um, You're pretty sure that Galen can't make scrolls at this yeah. point. Uh, I go over to the wash basin. Okay. Uh, if we have one nearby. Yep. Pour some water in, and I focus and cast uh, Commune. Okay. That takes uh, a minute to cast. So. Yep. Uh, I'll set my stuff down and uh, just focus and start praying over the... You get the vague oh. sense of the two of them kind of coming around to watch you reverently. Um, and, uh, yeah, once it's done... It's probably a bit uh, of muttered prayer as well. And oh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's praying. The surface the, of the water itself becomes a little cloudy, almost icy. Yeah, it also ripples, because that's, that's one of the things that happens it's true. Uh, it's true. with him. Uh, he uh, says, uh, Lady Pelexia, Galen... One of, I assume he's one of the people who took the vows as well. Yep. Uh, yep. One of your servants has been spotted with, uh, has been seen with large amounts of cash. Is he, is he selling promises of your aid for money? Um, 
the water freezes over solid um, in front of you uh, and then cracks in one small space. A little bit of the ice falls through below. Um, and then it seals over almost instantly. Uh, another piece cracks and seals over almost instantly. And another piece about the size of a coin breaks and falls in and you can see the cracks rippling outward from that hole. It does not seal over instantly. Okay, I believe that is a yes. Um, did Catherine put him up to this? Did he make a deal with the head of it? Or is she influencing him to do this? Um, well, which, which question do you want to ask? Because they are slightly different. Is Catherine behind his actions? Okay. Um, the ice seems to freeze over solid once more. This time it becomes uneven. And a part of it seems to crumble in a little bit further. The overwhelming mass of the rest sort of bobs up in the water, pressing that piece lower and lower into the water. I think that's a yes. <laughs> yeah. Amarin is going to attempt to write an, an interpretive guide at some point. Um, <laughs> God's man. How to speak ice. <laughs> um, shoot, do I have a third question? How's it going? Mm. <laughs> Ambiguous. <coughs> um... Your statue is crying. Is that a good sign or a bad one? Sorry, is that a good sign? Because it's going to be yes or no. The uh, ice evaporates, leaving a bit of steam. Uh, the steam flows up and flows up over you and the two that are standing beside you. Uh, it feels warm and comforting, like a blanket. Um, and there's an instinct of it being like, almost like a full body hug from this steam. And then it dissipates quickly. You can hear the sharp intake of breath from from Urena beside you. That was wonderful. I believe that was a yes. Um, I was communing with the mother. Uh, these were signs of her responding to my questions with Unfortunately, vague answers most of the time, but that is as it is. The nature of gods. We cannot trust Catherine. She is the one behind Galen. And again, the look, speaking first to Urena, but the look back to Taylor, uh, kind of knowing or kind of understanding or kind of suspicious, suspicious already. Um, we had a feeling, we couldn't pin it down. We've talked about it a bit, but we wouldn't want to present you with nothing understood um, does she seem to have influence over any of the others I've seen her talking to a lot of people mm. but I it's hard to say we've talked to a lot of people too and frankly we're trying to have a bit of influence so mm. we've kind of assumed it's much the same way I'm more worried if she has been influencing you and the other members well, frankly, we don't really talk to her all that much. Mm. We tend to keep to ourselves a little bit more. She and Galen have spent a lot of time together, though. I frankly, I thought it was um, something different. I think there might be something there, there, but she is a wily one. Is she dangerous? Who is she? Do not worry. I may have to have her removed from the church, though. I believe her influence is not a good thing. From the doorway you hear, Zinzalor, we should really get going. I did say urgency, didn't I? Yes, sorry. My apologies. Um, for now... Um, if the two of you could keep things running with the repair work 
and the other work, uh, of course, uh, the statue will just leave as is until uh, I get back. Hopefully I will be back tonight, but I, I'm not sure what I'm being called for, so maybe this will take a short, or a few days. You can trust us. We'll I know be here. I can't. Go find your friends. I'm not. Um, and yes, uh, I will head off with Zinzalor. Okay. He leads you on a twisting path. You would have gone to the temple a different way, but there seems to be purpose in the way that he's walking. Um, it's something you've noticed about the followers of Namazani before, that for them, uh, it is about the journey, strangely, as much as the destination. Uh, and most of their journeys, including their conversations, seem to wind in paths that don't make any sense until they're done. At last, you find yourself before the temple of Namazani, and you notice something different about it. It's the same square building, same squat building it ever was, white on the outside, pure white. But there seems to be something in the moonlight which is glowing just ever so slightly. It's hard to see, and it would be the equivalent of seeing your breath on a cold night. Mm. I'll go over and touch the wall. And just Do I feel anything different? Um, yes. It feels alive, in a way. Energetic. Not not fleshy, but but more that there's a warmth there. Mm. Like it's been warmed by the sun for a long time, even though it's deep at night now. Oh, this is different. When did this happen? Not too long ago. Well, then we should probably talk with your, uh, your priestess. Yeah, follow me. Uh, one thing. If you, if you should see any shadows, avoid them. Okay. It would be best. Uh, I can't really explain. Yeah, I'm mean, getting used to that. And he leads you in through the temple do doors. Um, once again, taking the right-hand path and beginning the twisting, long, strange pathward inward. You notice that that lightness inside grows stronger the deeper you get in. But there are these weird cracks of shadow that exist in corners, or even strangely along a wall that as you pass by, almost as though it's a single dimensional illusion, it vanishes. Um, he does not waver, he does not stop, he does not slow down. I follow him. Finally, you find yourself in that central garden which you've been to before. There, sitting simply, no ornaments, no fancy clothing whatsoever. A simple, uh, light white dress is the form of Miyazana. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Miyazana Vahana. Mm -hmm. uh, sitting there. Um, she smiles as you come in and, and bids you to come over. Thank you, Zenzelor. Please, friend, come and sit. Uh, have I heard her have a title? It's priestess. Okay. High priestess, uh, really, technically, but... Uh, certainly high priestess. I go over and I will sit in front of her, mirroring her, her uh, seating position. Please, we are colleagues now. You may call me Miyazana, at least in private. As you wish, Miyazana. Uh, you might call me Amran. Everybody does. I will. I will be brief. It is not my nature, but I will. I have had a vision, and it involves mm. your friends. And it involves you, even though you are not there yet. It involves mm. much more than I could even say, and I will not burden you with all that I have seen. Know that I have seen it. Know that I know that it to be true. But it is partially the future and partially the past. We are mortal creatures and must deal with the present. Are you prepared to travel? Yes. Good, good. I had suspected you would be. I will take you to them, but the way will be long and hard. You will be tired. You must not stop. The I way there is difficult and it will be a strain on us both. But if you are concerned for your friends, I will make it happen. There's one other thing I must ask. Yes? Though I 
I would not wish to burden you. If I do not know how long I am to be gone, I would ask you to look to watch over my church as much as possible. They are good people, but there is one among them I do not trust. I believe she is attempting to corrupt things from the inside, and I, I would not want them left too alone with her. Can you tell me her name? Catherine. It, well, I think she goes by the name Catherine. She looks at you hard for a moment. I look at her right back. <laughs> and, and you get the sense that she's seeing more than the surface. I'm fine with that. I haven't said anything. You have said her name. Her, I, her yeah, current I, identity. Yes. <laughs> That's not her name. Mm. I see. This will become clearer later. I can see the stone being carved now. I will send word. She pauses for a moment. Zinzalor will look after them. Thank you. Now, if you are prepared to travel, I am prepared I to lead you. Follow me. Put on the rest of the armor pieces, like the boots and everything, guns okay. and whatnot, and then the shield. And basically, just get all. <laughs> so it's like, for are you ready to go? Yes. She starts to walk off, and then you start putting on armor. You're like, well, I'm not, I'm almost ready. Just, I need a minute. Just, like, just a minute. Right. Um, but she leads you on the left hand path, which in the temples has never been the case. It has mm -hmm. always been the right hand path, uh, at least to start with. But this time, it is the left hand path. And she starts to move quickly. Um, the hallway is long, and it is straight. So long you cannot see the end. But you do see striations of shadow along the walls, growing thicker and thicker with every step. Um, she leads you down this hallway. Now large sections of the walls are a mixture of shadow and, and light. Uh, and the journey seems to take a long time. Not a day, not a week, not a month. There is no sense of time passing as such. There's no markers of it other than the shadows on the walls. But you do feel it in your very bones. You age ten years in this process. That makes my physical description even more complicated. <laughs> and you can feel it weary in your bones. She also has grown uh, slower as she moves, but still with a purpose, with a strength. Um, now the shadows are more than half, and she directs you. There, ahead, that is the opening. And she turns back, and now you can see that behind her, the shadows have started to pull away from the wall, and are starting to close off. I will journey back. And I will ensure that they do not travel further. But this will not be your return. Uh, as she's doing that, I just, as she's pulling back, I go, sanctuary. At least I attempt to. Okay. I'm exhausted, but whatever I have, I try to give her some assistance okay. going back, and then I press on. Uh, she smiles and nods, uh, and then turns back. And with a strange ferocity you've not seen from her, she prepares for battle in a way that you've never seen her in her gentle form ever do. Uh, but the shadows now take on distinct forms, and from her are, are white bolts of pure energy that seem to have this strange effect of not firing directly at what she's firing at, but instead curving around to their weaknesses and, and highlighting them, bright, bring them bright and loud, and they scream and cry as you pass through that light. And find yourself in an Amazian temple. Something feels different. You are exhausted. Mm -hmm. You have one level of exhaustion. Then, uh, yes, I will keep going. Just, there's a tunnel. Keep walking. This one curves off to the right. And then, before you, disfigured, familiar, but changed ever so much. You see Clark. One eye, 
misfigured and large and colored, drooping. His form a little slower than you remember. Uh, is there any other visible scar? Okay. No, just one. Clark? You see Amrun in full gear. He's got a little... Uh, well, how does 10 years age him? Well, He's an elf. He's an elf. <laughs> it's like 10 well, minutes. One, I'm an elf, and two... I was already de-aged seven years. <laughs> so back, you're slightly uh, older than jungle. when you started, right? So right. I, yes, I, I. Okay. Chronologically, he's fifty-one, but he okay. looks forty-four. But he's an elf, so he still looks in his twenties. Sure, sure. <laughs> he probably looks haggard, though. Yeah, uh, just for a little bit. Um, uh, what happened? That's a long story. You should come with me. As your eyes adjust, you start to note a change in the way the light moves. It is almost as though a dirty filter has been placed over all light sources, but there are no visible light sources. Oh, I hate this place. You will. <laughs> <laughs> Let us tell you about our uh, adventures. <laughs> uh, lead on. Okay, I'm gonna try to get to the get lost. to the bag. Okay. As um, best I can. You trying to continue on beyond him? Well, wherever the direction is that the bag is, I'm, okay. I'm going to get lost. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, you, you see Clark kind of push past you and lead in a direction, but he doesn't seem to know where he's going. I take it, looking back, I don't see the continuation of the tunnel where I came here. You see a, a turn. Okay. Um, are we looking for something specific? Yeah, something you'd be interested in. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to keep it. Story of my life. Um, um, As we walk, I will, I will tell you, uh, we have discovered in this plane, this world, the bones of your goddess. And we're going to use one to bargain our way out of here. Sorry. <laughs> it's not exactly what I was expecting you to say, but... Um, yeah, that sounds pretty standard. Um, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have so many questions, but I'm going to put them on hold for now. I would suggest um, speaking to the smart ones. <laughs> I'm just getting a bag. As you walk around in circles. Yeah. <laughs> like he'll like walk, and then he'll like turn, and then like walk to the left. Is it a bag that you had before? No, it's not mine. Whose is it? It's a magic bag. Is it Ozera's magic bag? Yeah. I'm going to do a locate object for Elzera's magic bag. <laughs> it's Which about 100 feet away magic in bag. five different directions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <up>. thanks, Templin <laughs> and Mazini. Well, you'll be happy to know it's there, 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 and there. Oh. And there. Actually, can you uh, show me? No, nope, it shouldn't be more than one place. I'm guessing the temple is messing with me. Okay. Well, let's go this way. Sure. Um, and yes, uh, we will attempt to... I mean, I think I can get that going for ten minutes, so I'll try to home in on one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels as though every time you get closer to one, another one pops up in a different direction. I'm just going to focus on the one. I think it's trying to lead me off in different directions. Yeah, this place does that. Mm. After a few minutes, not having felt yourself get much closer to any of them, or weirdly in this strange multi-dimensional space, getting closer, but as, the, as, as you then get closer and closer, it gets further away in a way that sort of makes sense. Uh, if you were into fifth dimensional geometry, maybe you would understand, but you are not. Now this place is, my brain hat. is nearly <laughs> comprehensible. <laughs> Uh, however, you do hear uh, quick footsteps coming in your direction, small footsteps. And around the corner, you see, uh, well, the person you know yeah. uh, as Speaker Ordo. Ah, there you are. Oh, hello. I don't hello. think we've met. This is the key no. of this place. A halfling gnome? Uh, he is a gnome, I believe. Okay. Uh, I'll drop down to one knee and throw a hand. Nice to meet you. Oh, it takes your hand and shakes it. Very nice to meet you. Where'd you come from? This is Amaroon. He's to be trusted implicitly. I came from one of your other, I, well, I think it was an other temple, 
or maybe I'm in the same temple, but it's in two different planes. Do you know Miyazana Fahana? <laughs> Sorry, I'd say High Priestess Miyazana right. Fahana. Uh, he kind of smiles. Oh, well, that explains a lot. Follow me. Bag? Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, I guess we need a bag with a bone in it. Oh, it's just over there. And he points, and there's literally just an opening and the doorway <laughs> to the central central area. Okay. There you can see the bag. The seams are now popping oh, yes. as you watch, and you can see that the bag is starting to lose. Strangely, it's losing coherence, uh, almost as though it's not ripping from the seams itself, but it's starting to lose existence uh, a little bit. And plumes of white are now exuding out of it. As you look over to it, uh, Amrun, there's an overwhelming sense, almost like you're standing in a tidal wave now, uh, a sense of being kind of swept up in this pureness that you know without having to get any closer, you know from this distance, just at a sight, this is her. <clears throat> and it almost brings you to tears. The purity of it. I need to get that out of there. Uh, for the sake of both of those th things, uh, I'm going to try and... Oh, it's huge. Careful. Sure. I have an uh, idea, though. Okay. Um, and you're a good person to ask. Magic stuff doesn't usually break that easy, right? Not easily, no, but it can be broken. Cool. Uh, Clark takes off his cloak. Okay. Which is magical. Mm -hmm. And he attempts to wrap it in the bag. Or wrap it around the bag. Okay, all right. This may do for a little while. Uh, Which cloak is that, by the way? Uh, that is the cloak of protection. It's a wondrous, rare, and requires attunement item. Okay. That also has stylish shape shifting. Sure. E. Oh, that's right. That was one of the ones you found in Taraka, wasn't it? It's one of the ones that we can change the color from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it, like, it was, wasn't was from Taraka. No, oh, no, okay. we, we, uh, no, it was the fancy clothes that were in Taraka. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And okay. it prevents the light from escaping, so we can carry it. Well, there's that, seen. and also it's uh, it, if it does break the bag, you will get a big enough explosion that it, that'll be fine. Okay. Cool, cool. Well, you shunted to yet another dimension. <laughs> One, two, three, not me, um, not carrying it. <laughs> uh, our friends are outside, now that we have the bag. We need to go. We should rush this out to them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, little one, uh, Orda. Yes. Can you lead us out, please? Oh, of course. Quickly. Yeah, sure. It's right over there. <laughs> it's not quite, but uh, just follow me. Uh, and he does look back to make sure you're following. So you are going to try to heave the thing? Okay. Well, it's it's not heavy yet, but it will Well, be. it it's half heavy. Oh, okay. Um, there's this weird sense of trying you to move it. You owe me a bag of holding. That <laughs> feels, it's not broken yet. It's not broken yet. Uh, you would actually recognize this feeling, mm -hmm. uh, having probably worked a little bit down the docks and some of the jobs you've been on. It feels like moving a barrel full of water. Okay. Which is, it's not just the bulk of it that's a problem. Right. It's every time you move, it swishes and moves around. And it feels almost like that, like it's slippery or, 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 or having a difficulty. Uh, now, what is your strength? Currently 16. Okay. Uh, it is heavy for you, but you can do it. But it's a full on job to carry the thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I am following them. Okay. Uh, as you're kind of holding on to the bag. It's it's strange because visually you've got this small sack, basically a bag about that big, mm -hmm. and you're kind of having to heave it along as if it's a massive barrel. Uh, to anyone watching, it would be hilarious, but Orda doesn't seem to be laughing or bothered that much. You notice Clark struggles to move a bit. Yeah, he's falling he, back a little moves. bit. Are you injured? Uh, that's a broad question. As he looks at you with his sort of mm. ugly jaundiced eye. Well, um, that's complicated. I'm okay with it. We just need to get this thing out. Uh, yeah. Um, I am, I'm going to reach under the, just as we're going, I'm going to reach under the uh, cloak to the bag. Okay. And I'm going to cast... Protection versus uh, good and evil. Hmm. Okay. To make uh, to protect the bag against celestials. Hmm. Okay. Hoping that that might give it some resistance to the pressure from the um, god boat. It is mostly a, a willing creature. Oh. 
that might not work then. I'm still going to try it, okay. but uh, yeah, I may not do much of anything. Uh, you feel the magic uh, release, or you feel the, the energy release, and there is a... Uh, oh, and that consumes holy water or powder, uh, silver or iron. Uh, yeah, I have uh, both around. I have lots of holy water, thanks okay. to that talisman. Uh, you, uh, yeah, you release the, the sort of splash of holy water, which um, it it feels like it's soaked into the bag, strangely. You're not sure if it worked or not. Uh, I'm fine with but, that. But the power has been released. Uh, and very quickly, two turns at most, or to lead you to the front. In the back, Radix is now trying to speak a little bit more, but she's kind of already got herself out of breath again. There were six of them heading this way, kind of like the, the lizard people I saw before, but a little bit bigger. I don't know how they followed us, but they were just up over the hill. I guess they didn't see me because I was all... Okay. Were they on foot? But she's in the back of the building. Okay. You're still out front with uh, with uh, Azizix, Askazix. I will learn not to create names like that again someday. <laughs> Ask a Zix. Always pronounce the NPC names before you say I did, in the thing. But then I wrote it down as I wanted to pronounce it. I was like, oh, crap, that's, car that's as complicated. I, understand it, it's I wrote down the phonetic Marquesas. version. Yeah. Uh, and my notes is actually Ask a Zix. <laughs> With a Z and three X's. Clark's accent doesn't permit that. Sorry. Yeah, it's the tooth. You know, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. So, yes, out front, uh, uh, Ask a Zix is still kind of stepping her, her foot impatiently um, looking at you occasionally and then shouldn't be much longer I'm going to tell Radix okay. thank you for telling me of course you should try to get back to the grove I can't leave you now I just want you to stay safe make a persuasion check this is not going to be easy Natural 15, so 14. <laughs> good for me. Yeah. That would be good for me, too. Um, but I don't... You, you won't be safe. I, I can help. Don't you think I can help? I'm sure you could. I just don't want... You've done your job. And her anyway. face goes pale, and she looks... You don't think they're at the... You don't think Bernard and my sisters are in... And she starts to turn into a cloud. Think you, you get the impression of what she was trying to say, that she suddenly realized if they're here, they could also be there, and they would be in, da they would be in danger. Go protect them. Thank you for your help. She nods, uh, in, in slowly turning into gas. Um, she does look sad, but also very worried at the moment. And I turn into a giant... Elemental. That's because it's giant what? Giant, <laughs> giant, <fish. laughs> giant frog. All right, what kind of uh, air elemental? Or what kind of, is it air elemental? Yeah. I don't know if you said that do or I not, but that apparently I filled it in. Uh, no, it's a silent transformation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, unless you, I don't know, shout as an air it's elemental. Like those, uh, silent but deadly um, ones. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's oh, perfect. Sad. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, that was bad. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> Uh, as you um, move around to the front of the building, I'm assuming? I'm going or... to sneak around the corner. Okay. Uh, do I see Zacchaeus? Uh, yeah, he's not making it particularly hard to see him. And you and still see the other still there. I see an air. <laughs> okay. Orin? Uh, Whoa! Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, I say six lizard things are coming this way. Radix oh. is on her way back to the grove. How does uh, Askazix react? When she sees the air elemental. Um, she looks suspicious. Uh, this is our other friend. She says there's six large lizard things coming in this direction. Uh, this is probably do not either of you understand Infernal? I do. Uh, I'm pretty sure I do. I think you did. Yeah. I think you did learn it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you understand what she says. It should not be repeated in polite company. Uh, it's the equivalent, kind of, of uh, swearing that generations of your family should be castrated simultaneously. Uh, it's it's pretty hard curse at that moment as she kind of looks around. Where are they? Where are they? Primordial speaking. I, I, I can understand common. <laughs> in the heat of the moment. The response. Response. First response is, I can understand common, all right? <laughs> you hear in your head, 
uh, Azkazik's voice as well. Where are they? Who are they? I don't know. The person, the Radix said that they were coming from that way, that they looked like the lizard people we were talking about. And she draws forth her sword. I'll point in the direction you're pointing. <laughs> I it's, will point in that direction. <laughs> it's about a five foot long sword with this jagged black blade along which you can see a green edge that grows stronger uh, as she pulls out the sword. Um, I'll cast mage armor. Okay. And just for giggles, why don't we draw a map? I don't know how far we'll get into this. I think we can do it. It's 45 minutes. There we go. Ish. We'll take an hour and a half. Uh, just a simple one. Thing at the center. I'm going to say the front door is right there. If you want to place yourselves Can on I the map. Mm -hmm. Happy little trees, everybody. I'm on one of the sides of the building. There we go. <sighs> so I would be like here ish. Yay! Yeah, you guys are within sight of the front door at this point. So. Turns out the whole temple's actually been that size the whole damn time. It's bigger on the inside. Yeah, it, 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 very I would not be surprised. Both of those things. Uh, since I don't have an Ordo miniature just here, Ordo is now a oh. gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> sure. He was this whole time. I might have a mouse wings. Uh huh? I might have a mouse wings. Uh, sure, actually, that'll work perfectly. What? A mouse wing. Little guy. He is a little guy. There's no visible threat, but uh, Askazix has definitely drawn her weapon um, and is, is scanning around. Um, I will zoom forward and up to see if I can see anything. Okay. Um, I. For simplicity's sake, just so they don't have to draw the map bigger, I should have probably moved the map way down there, but that's okay. I put it in the middle for some silly reason. Oh, there's uh, the map screen on. Oh, look at that. I even forgot the button. Woo. There's the button. Press the button. All right. People get a chance to actually see the map. Hey. Uh, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say that the, you will see them when they crest the hill, essentially. Uh, as you do indeed make out a large, lumbering lizardman. That was something I shouldn't have said five times. Um, somewhat behind him. Is it the another. legion of large lumbering the <laughs> Oh dear. Alright. Ah yes. Red, red, white dot. I remember you. <laughs> <laughs> and for convenience sake, they are charging up over the hill just as you start to rise up and we roll initiative. Why not? Yeah. I haven't done that for a while. All right. Oh wait. Um. All right then. On that, on that note. I'm already rolling a better initiative than Kazama ever did. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay, just a second. I'm gonna set up a couple of things here. All right, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, Initiative is dex, correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Because initiative oh. in Wild Shape goes by the dex of the animal. And I forget that all the time. Mm -hmm. All right, oh, hey, look at this. I get to bring a flag back. I was wondering what, what you would do. <laughs> All right. Uh, 20 to 25 or higher? That's that's lower. Okay. Uh, 15 to 20? 19. 20. 19. Because air elementals have plus 5 to dex. 20 to You get a 15, too? Yeah. Okay. No, he's also 15. 15? Okay. But only plus one dex. Uh, 
forgetting how to do this. It's been a while. Uh, 10 to 15. That's me. Okay. I get a 13. 13. All right. And that's all of you guys. Am I missing somebody? Oh, Radix isn't here. She has her mission. So we've got Clark. I love her, but I don't want to be responsible for her in another fight. She did almost just die. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple times. That is like 100% uh, the reason is this like... It's like, don't attempt to page too much, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to get one more to roll here. Where are you? Where are you, Askazix? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Askazix will be star C, just so I can keep her distinct. And they apparently did not expect you guys to be aware. So we begin with Clark. Yeah. Uh, bag in hand, we'll get to the door. Okay. I think that, that's it for me. All right. Zachus, Zachus uh, you see uh, Clark come up. His hands are holding the bag of holding as if it's not just a tiny little bag. And he seems to be straining a little bit with yeah, it. Also you trapped can, in it. And yeah, wrapped in the cloak. We've got company. You might want to leave that inside right now. And what do I see here? Oh. It's not you yet. Not yet. Do, 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 do. I thought it was it's me. So. Oh, it's Elsa first. Or does at the back of the. Hmm? It's Elsa first. Uh, no, Clark got a 20. I got a 19. Mm -hmm. Oh, is there got a 19? Yeah. And Zach has got, I got 15. a 15. Yeah, that's why you were not doing anything, just talking to him. Okay, okay, gotcha. I was no, just you... saying you saw him okay. there. <laughs> that's all I was saying, is you gotcha. saw him there. Uh, but it is Elzer's turn. <laughs> okay, that's, that's what I thought. <laughs> All right, so I had rushed up to see, to find people. Yep. Yeah, so. like you were somewhere. So you're somewhere about, about yeah. you're, up about. You're within one round of movement distance either way. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I'm going to, um, whichever one looks the biggest to me. Uh, that would be the one... Right there. He definitely looks the so biggest. Whichever one looks like the most of a threat, and usually that is eyes. Uh, he's carrying a very large pole arm. Uh, and it looks like he's foaming at the mouth. Blue skin. I, actually, I'll go to one of the ones on the end, so I'm not in okay. range of the other one. So I'll be, like, on the outside. Okay. Um, that guy's a little considerably smaller. Smaller? Yeah. Smaller? Smaller. Really? I just am uh, alone up front. So I'm not going to be in range yep. of... He's about to get swallowed by air. Oh, that's a nat 20 on one and a 13 on the other. Well, uh, the nat 20 hits. Uh, and then plus eight. Uh, so oh, well, yeah. Tell me, tell me the totals. A... <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> sure, that, yeah, that easily hits. Yeah, 28 uh, and a... What do you think about that? No. 20... Th 21, 28. Yeah. 21, yeah. More than enough. Yeah. But the crit on the first hit. Crit on the first hit. Does his body does do bludgeoning damage as it flies into the guy next to him? <laughs> <laughs> They've got a little uh, distance between them. 2d8, so 4d8. Uh, what is the color on his base? It should be two dots. Uh, the blue one? It, no. The one she's attacking. The 3d one. It's a 3d one. Oh, right. Sorry, never mind. It wasn't the other ones. It's uh, 3D1 so. with a stabby tail as opposed to 3D1 with the caster. Right. So, 8. Or it looks like a caster. 11. Let's see if he gets a chance to do it. It would be kind of funny. 8, 14, 19, plus 5, so 24 damage on the first hit. Oof. Yeah, that rocks his world quite a bit. And the second hit, which was 7, 10, 15. Uh, so, uh, 24 and 15, so th 39? Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. He's still standing, but cool. he's definitely not happy about it. And um, I... GTFO. Uh, so what were you doing? How was, is this a slam? Bam. Okay, Bam. yeah. Get he's kind of, he's <laughs> kind of, the first one kind of takes him kind of underneath the arm and kind of lifts him up. He looks shocked and surprised. Uh, you can see him getting ready to cast something, and then the second one, bam, hits him in the head, kind of staggering a bit as he lands. And you uh, pull back. Yeah. Uh, how far back does she get? Because we don't really know. We didn't have a solid placement for her before, so this will set where she's... Uh, let's say you have uh, a third of your movement left, whatever that is. A third of 100. 
So 30, 30. Yeah. You don't really have to worry about movement yeah, in this particular 10, thing. 15, yeah. 20, 25, 30. Okay, that's there you go. So. All right. And you have the feet, so you can't get a yeah. mm -hmm. attack. Okay. I haven't played this character in a while, and that's why I was like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going in the middle of where everyone's going to get an attack mm -hmm. of opportunity from me. Okay. All right. Uh, Zacchus, you're up. See, this guy's doing poorly, so um, let's firebolt him. Okay. So seven plus. What's the modifier again? It's here somewhere. Plus 11. So, so 18. 18. That hits. Three. Seventeen fire. So the the bolt spins through the air, kind of like a little bottle rocket. You see him fall over, dead. How much did he have left? Yeah, thirteen. Yeah, uh, so you did seventeen, which is more than enough. So I don't have to have that tab open. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> let's see. And um, after I'm done that, I'll mm -hmm. move behind the building a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Typical Zagus fashion. <laughs> All right. As do not die. Yeah. Ask Zix's turn. Not... Let's see. What is her range? Sure. Um, yeah. She's got her sword drawn, so she will zip in uh, as she flies. Oh yeah, easily. Right to the biggest one uh, with no hesitation whatsoever. Takes Radix a... has said six. Hmm? Radix said six. Radix. This is uh, Ask Azix. Yeah, no, what Radix reported that there were six coming she in. She did. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. As she takes a strike with the sword, you can see the, the edge of it glow a little green, uh, striking down. Oh, yeah, that'll hit. You see, I don't think anyone else yes. And that will hit. Eh, okay. All I see is Clark butt right now. It's true. <laughs> Uh, she, she didn't have a chance to do that. Okay. Uh, not quite as successful as yours. But she Go does. Back to Paula. Uh, that's <laughs> true. But she is staying where she is. Oh. Okay, that's already factored in. Uh, but she is staying where she is and not, not moving, staying right there, uh, guarding it. I'm uh, you, you hear the sounds of fighting outside. Um, a hmm. bit of a distance, though. Uh, yeah, I will move up next to Clark. Okay. Uh, what do I see out the door? So up ahead, you see uh, an air elemental. Um, it's hard to recognize, but you're fairly certain it would be Elzera if, that's, if they're with them. Uh, you see a large, uh, dark-winged creature uh, fighting against some, or fighting with, or fighting around uh, some some lizard-like people on the crest of the hill. For the purposes of distance, the hill doesn't really matter. Mm. Which one's the bad guys? Lizards. Okay. <laughs> oh, also probably the winged one, but that's besides the point. Is that Elzera? Uh, the windy thing, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, the lizards are in a bad position right now. Um, we need to get that out of the bag. We need to get right it out now. of the building. Uh, Don't see it. Everybody can see it. Uh, Zach isn't there. I'm not there, so I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm worried that it's... Is it, Sorry. I've been there when one of these it tears open. It's not good. He's we have to get out of it now. Okay. Um, unless you want to end up on a completely random nude dimension. Join Kuzaima. <laughs> completely random nude dimension. Mm -hmm. As long as it's nude. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to try and take the bag from Clark. Clark will relent. Like, okay. yeah. What's your strength? I'm not going to forcibly do it. I'm just no, gonna... it's just no, like, this but is the it's heavy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, ten. Ten, mm -hmm. you're struggling to hold it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let it down on the ground. Uh, I'm on the floor. You mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm just, I'm gonna grab the cloak and 
try not to let it fall too fast, but I'm not very strong, so I just kind of guide it to the ground. Um, and uh, here you go. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try opening the bag up, and I'll try maneuvering. Okay, you see nothing but light in the opening of the bag. If I get a chance to talk, I'll say, "Do that outside, please." The light washes over you, and it feels heavenly. Hmm. People like you help yourself get out mm. of the bed. Um. Well, I will uh, attempt to drag it out the front door. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, I know if we toss it up, if we just upend it, things are supposed to fall out. That's what happened the last time we did this. So. I'm going to attempt it. You do notice the seams of the bag are, are very loose. Mm-hmm. But uh, hey, if it rips, Zachus is already on the hook to replace it for me. <laughs> but still, try to save it, because it's probably cheaper to get repairs than it is to get a new bag. I wish I had mending, but I don't. Um, mending doesn't work. You don't have wish, either. Mm. Ironically, you could wish for mending. Mm. I'd wish for Emerald's destroyed spellbook. <laughs> I tried divine intervening for it, but I'm not going to. Uh, I think it was technically used up earlier in the day. Um, yeah, no, he's going to try to sort of upend it and then just. Again, did you step out or are you still inside the, yeah. the building? No, he dragged it out the door. Okay. All right. There's a strange sensation as you pass through the door. It's almost as though you were swimming through something. It passes quickly. I mean, you don't really think too much of it. But it does give you a little bit of a jolt as you pass through and kind of press through the barrier. Uh, and then you upend the bag? Yeah, basically, he's got it on the end. He's trying to pull at it. He's trying to open it wider. Whatever he can do to try to... Make a strength check. Yes. Because in order to upend it, you've literally got to upend it. Do I see light? Excuse oh, yeah, me. there's a sudden light as you see Amrin step out of the out of the temple. I'm behind the corner, but, like, do I see the light extend the, past the corner? You'd see light, probably. Yeah, I suppose. No. Um, Put it back. <laughs> I get a 19. 19. Digging, oh, is that with a disadvantage, by the way? Because you are exhausted. Uh, is that a, oh, I suppose that's a skill thing, stat thing. Oh, that's a two. That's that a two. 19 would have been so nice. So as you go to upend it, uh, you literally can't lift it up off the floor. It's right now just lying on, on the side of the floor. The, the, the light kind of flowing out. You you thought, you thought for a moment, I've got it, I've got it, and then, oh, God, was that a part of my I back? I don't have it. All right. right. So I you got a little bit of movement left and a bonus right. action no. if, you, if, you, if you want. But. Um... Yeah, I will... Uh, so I think Clark is, like, throwing the bag on the floor right now, basically. Uh, okay. <laughs> Walls are a funny thing. There we go. 60, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Yeah, just within range. I am going to summon a spiritual weapon. Yeah. Curse stab to the one in the middle. Okay. Thirteen plus nine, twenty-two. That is a hit. Uh, it's just a basic level of one, so where's that? D eight plus three, six damage, force damage. Okay. Uh, it kind of hisses and, and and pulls its uh, staff back to try to defend itself, but doesn't seem to have much effect. Yeah. I, uh, or I sorry, that's the one without the staff. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I basically just sort of and like. Water flies out, forms into a spear, and stabs it. Okay. That's it for my turn. Uh, yeah, none of those are going to help him. So, let's see. What is he going to try to do? Uh, let's see. That one is going to try to attack the strange weapon. Again, what does it look like? Uh, it's a, basically a spear formed of uh, flowing water, and the water is kind of flowing up off the ground. Okay. Uh, it attempts to hit it. Uh, actually kind of snaps a bite at it first. Uh, but I don't think it can be hit. It's, so Yeah, it's... yeah. It's, uh, so again, kind of... Uh, it, it It's striking true, but still yeah. not actually harming it at all. Uh, but that is consuming its time. The one in front of uh, Azkazix. 
Uh, oh, that's a nasty hit. No, we can't kill the head. Uh, does it actually hit, though? Oh, oh yeah, no, it does. Uh, oh, actually, no. Uh, you see her take the sword and twist it, knocking his weapon aside. But he will try again. Uh, that time misses. And that time crits. Oh, so no. there we go. Makes up for it. Uh, making up for it a little bit. Uh, as it's actually, sorry, it's, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's a weapon. Uh, swing and hit. Uh, hits for a chunk, but, uh, she does not seem to be concerned. Uh, that one's not going to help him. Uh, now the others. Uh, let's see, what is the movement? This one, 20, 30, 20, 20, 30, just beyond the edge. And this one, 10, 20. Did you run up in the, fly up in the air? Uh, I'd be probably my usual, like, 5, 10 feet. Okay, it's got reach, so I'm actually going to move up to you. And try to strike. Cool. That is a 9. That is a 7. Cool. That is a 23. That one hits. Um, I also don't have my shield, so my AC is 15. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, it's 13 slashing damage. 13 damage? Yep. But I think it's halved because of the form, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, that is all for him. Oh, that one. Oh, what can he do? Can he do anything? Come on, guy, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, you can't. You really are that bad. Which one? Uh, oh, oh, what's the range on that? There we go. Uh, seeing someone come out, uh, he kind of stands himself back up. And seeing someone come out of the temple, uh, he uh, gathers his claws, hisses, and lets, lets loose. Uh, but nothing visibly happens except around where Amrun is. Uh, the ground begins to twist and, uh, and shake as small little uh, vines and spikes and thorns erupt around you. For the rest of you, you'd recognize a similar uh, set of vines from the festering itself. Um, Uh, because it's right under you, you see it, but it is kind of subtle, and it's along the surface area. Uh, that would... Where is the... Do, do, do. So... You just pop back to life. Do, 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 do. Oh, wait. Is he dead? Yeah. Oh, yeah. he was the dead guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had another guy here, and that's why I was like... Oh, this no, one? No, no. He's already done his thing. I mean... Okay. Yep. Never mind. That never really happens. For a moment, there is a moment where he thinks he's doing something, then he rolls over and dies. Yeah, because there were the three carbo ones and then the two 3D ones. Yep, no, I, I made a mistake. So. I made a mistake. And that's why I was asking about it being six that were recorded. Yes. In its nope. death throws, it waved its finger weirdly and it, it started casting a spell by accident, but then he died. It was trying to do something and then I remembered it can't do something. All right. <laughs> Let's see. What is its perfect? Okay. And is that, is that. Okay. of the round Ordo oh, oh. Uh, Ordo is just kind of hiding on the inside <laughs> he's not been good in battles and, and from the outside <laughs> and, and yeah the outside is not good we go back around the top Clark uh, Clark will charge out draw okay. a weapon well actually no he'll he'll probably have seen what uh, Aaron was trying to do and he'll try to do it too so is okay. it outside yeah oh thank you go ahead here uh, sure Oops. Zach is drunk. Goes nothing. And open bag. All right. Uh, how are you opening the bag? Are you just pulling the thing out, or are you trying to upend the bag? I think upending the bag is probably the best bet. Okay. Uh, that will be a strength check. You're not a disadvantage. Okay. Good job. Uh, 15. 
15. Okay. You grip the ends of the bag, and you can feel it kind of almost shredding underneath your fingers as you mm. grab it and kind of twist it out. As you recall, when you had to put it in there before, it strained to actually contain the thing. The opening was almost too small to hold it. Uh, but then you kind of... Bruh. Was there anything else in the bag? First? No. no. Okay. We had I was pretty everything. sure nothing else was there, but I, I wanted to I'm currently carrying all of my possessions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as <laughs> you kind of lift and pull and pull and pull, pull and pull and then kind of step back and pull as this enormous pillar emerges from this. Remember the pillar I think was almost eight feet tall as I recall uh, of solid stone and it kind of flares not like shape or color but oh actually there's an eraser, there's a little pillar. You have two pillars, how'd that happen? I actually have a pillar. Cool. It's almost the right size. Uh, and it's wild. As this emerges in front of you, Amrun, you feel this surge of power go through you. Uh, as York. the familiarity of this, a tangible physical element of the god you have pledged yourself to, of the legend, of the myth, of the mystery that you've been engaged with for months, if not a year at this point, uh, and it washes over you and kind of brilliantly shines bright. The exhausted condition is lifted. Uh, as you find yourself reinvigorated by by just its sheer presence around you. And you all watch as the white light kind of spins around like a uh, twisting uh, maelstrom around uh, 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 Amrun. Uh, but it is now free of the bag. The bag itself is limp in your hands, kind of torn. You almost get that, that extra dimensional cough as it's kind of finally re releasing its cargo. <laughs> but it's in really bad shape. However... Do you want to move? It's still being replaced. Well, I kind of move a little <laughs> bit to, to get... Just to release to it, you'd have just, to. Yeah, I want this So, one. for the rest of the move, um, we'll probably step forward and draw steel. Or, in this case, silver. Okay. Uh, I think I probably got about 10 feet left. Uh, Unless you dash. Mm. Yeah. No, I wouldn't be able to. He's using his okay. action right, to right. move from the back, so... I could do a bonus dash. I'm choosing not to. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. You've also got that part. But, right. yes. Yes, you draw forth your weapon. Uh, invigorated, perhaps, by your friend being here or the fact that a battle's in front of you. Yeah. Although it's way over there. Gosh. Oh, I'm, I'm not going. I'm just going to defend. I'm not right. going over there. They're going to come to me. Uh, <laughs> Elzera, <laughs> come here, please. Come here. I'm going to hit once, and then that's a natural 18 plus 8, so 26. Oh, yeah. Um... This one gets uh, 9, 14. 14 damage? Yeah. All right. And then second hit for a natural 19. And it's the other guy, so. Uh, for another 14. So 28, okay. It's probably easier if I add it up at the end. Uh, and I'm going to... Stay where I am. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to fly up a little bit more. All right. Eat. Actually, no. I'll stay where I am. <laughs> a little breathing. All right, uh, Zakis. The for a long time, you guys have been carrying this thing around, and to see it in its full glory again, and almost stronger, maybe because I'm Rune is standing beside it, maybe because. Has been he still can't, can't see still can't see Well, you can. You, like, you're peering around the corner. Yeah. There's no way you're going to ignore everything that's happening out front. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm wrong. <laughs> but the bright flashes definitely catches oh. your eye right away. Hey, Zacchaeus. <laughs> we'll discuss guide. later. Clearly, clearly, the pillar brought him here. Yeah. Okay, so this guy is getting Pummeled. smashed a lot, so he will get a firebolt. Okay. And I don't, I don't think that hits because that's a one. No, I don't think you have that high a modifier. No. Yet. Also, a one always. I blame the light in my eyes that I just aimed like right sideways. Yeah. Do yeah, you sure. hit me? <laughs> it's not. Or do I hit one of these guys? Uh, no, it just kind of harmlessly okay. boffs off in the hill. It's like, it's like I'm gonna. Oh, oh, bright. And I do notice that there's one guy missing. No, they're yeah, all they're... there. I mean, they have, they have, all that you've seen so far are right there. You never talked to Radix. No, but yeah. I said six. Yeah. Okay, sure. I, I had related. But like when I shot a firebolt at one of the, at 
this guy, then I'm, I, I would have seen all of them, right? Yeah. You could count them quickly, yeah. Yeah, like remembering what I saw before, there's one guy, like, out of the picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's one guy. There's a, there's a dead... Theor- there. Theoretically, there's one guy we don't see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you back inside? I don't like things I can't see. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that leaves it to Askazix. Askazix is swearing in Infernal. Uh, and, but it's, and you recognize the, the, the sound of it. Mm-hmm. It's not swearing because she's angry. She's more berating them for their lower stature and also kind of suggesting this is beneath her to do. Uh, as, the as she then takes the, the sword in both hands. Uh-oh. And then grins as she goes in. It's kind of right? still sort of flying a little bit. Uh, that is, oh yeah, an easy hit. And another easy hit. Ooh. And an even easier hit as all three slash uh, quite strongly. So first of all, that plus, oh, that's nasty. That's nearly max damage in the first hit. Uh, that's 30 points. Uh, actually, he's dead <laughs> from the first Whoa. strike. Uh, so she just sort of, like, sort of turns to the next guy and falls over because she's drunk with power. The elemental's too close, like making these awkward wins. Uh, so I'll carry over the sa- attack on that one, actually, as the, as the same roll, rather than roll again. Uh, not quite as strong on the second hit. Well, that's still 12, I guess. And the third damage is... Hiding behind Emeru. It's like, just like old times. Right? Yeah, she cut him down. <laughs> As she flies over to, to uh, him, and the first hit, double-handed, stri- strikes square on the skull. He's dazed for a second. The second one cleaves down into his, uh, his uh, torso, and she heaves the body up on the blade, lets it drop down even further, and then sort of pours it off uh, as if to say it's not, not even worth my time. Uh, that's From those guys. Holy moly. All right. Uh, well, she's there for a reason. Thank you. Uh, let's see. That's her turn. I'm Rune. Hmm. Well, first... 5, 10, 15, 20. Stop, stop, stop. Mm, yeah, it's a 20. That is. And six points of force damage. All right. It stabs at him awkwardly in the back, and he kind of cringes a little bit forward. It seems confused as to what he's facing. Um, everyone's action is probably looking at the... the uh, Pillar, because it's a whole lot of God in his face. Uh, so he's only half thinking about the fighting, but things seem to be going okay, anyways. So yeah, he's looking at the pillar. Okay. Touching it. Uh, it feels. It feels like a dream. It feels as nothing else. In fact, you can barely see anything else. But a nothing dream else in seems hell, to matter. but a dream. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's see. Well, that guy's in a rock and a hard place. We're still going to try uh, to to swing at, I guess, the Custom. air. Yeah, he's really not happy about that. That's a natural one. That's a second natural one. Oh, my God. <laughs> As he's like... <sighs> Distractions. Trying to swing at the thing in front my of him. My buddies are dead. That's no. terrible. That's so funny. That's so funny. All right. Does two natural ones in a row take away his third attack? Uh, basically, at that point, he's just giving up. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, actually, at that me. point, at that point, he's he is going to turn and bail. However, you get an attack of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, you do. The weapon doesn't, but uh, she does. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> kind of stymied by his stumbling out of the it's way. Contagious. That's hilarious. <laughs> he starts to to uh, tread up the hill. Let's see, yeah, that's as far as he can get. So he's at the crest of the hill, trying just running away. Alrighty, make a perception check. Okay. That was its turn, not Elzara's. So that was a one. 
That's so many ones. Check it out. So okay. great. Yep. Yep. Sure. You're you're Dude. completely mesmerized by the thing in front of you. Dude, I have a god boner right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, such that you barely register. Yeah. As a gigantic arm appears out of nowhere, reaches down, grabs the pillar, and it and the pillar vanish. Whoa. Vanish or when it went invisible? Disappeared. Actually, you would have seen the pillar disappear. That's about it. Yep. It was a large creature, very tall, with this one massive arm, reaches down, grabs onto it. Uh, you can make an arcana check if you want. Yeah. Eight plus, what is it, 14? I think 24. Yeah. Uh, Either way. It vanished with it. It is not there anymore. Emran falls forward into the dirt. But, aside from other magics, he couldn't have gotten far. So, uh, she goes after him. Oh, wait, no. She's already gone. Uh, oh, he's dead. Oh, it's Ordo. <laughs> Ordo is uh, just inside, kind of looking out, wondering what's going on, and actually says, "What's going on, uh, Clark? You've uh, heard behind you, kind of the yeah. the. There's a, a sort of presence, an audible presence, weirdly enough, of the pillar itself. And that's that's, that's vanishes, and the light dims behind you as you look back and see that it's missing. And Amber is tumbling forward into the dirt. Uh, wait, uh, big arm guy stole it. Can yeah. I counterspell that? Uh, you can certainly try. Yeah, counterspell his vanishing. Yep. Yeah, I'll totally do um, oh. Weirdly enough. Yeah, no, it's not a spell, oddly enough, it's power. Okay. Mm. So yeah, you you start to think about weaving that spell, and then realize uh, there was no spell cast. You did not see him casting a spell. There was no vocal whatever. Uh, you do know that some creatures can teleport themselves. In fact, you fought one not too long ago uh, that was a nasty squid-like thing that could teleport itself. As do many demons. So Clark, sorry. Uh, is the other lizard fellow at the corner of the building visible? Or is he hidden? I know there's another guy there somewhere. Uh, yeah, he's gone. He ran away. Okay. Things are going bad. Pretty much. I knew there was another guy out there. I forgot about him. All right. No, that's fine. It was going very badly for them, and that wasn't their purpose there anyway. Mm. Clark will sheath Lucille and grunt. Okay. Make a perception check. Okay. Uh, uh, cloak back on eight. Okay. Assuming I can get a cloak back on and it does thing. Uh, well, you're you're kind of like. Actually, no. Sorry, seventeen because I don't have the I don't have the weapon. That's the thing that gives me the bonus. Right. Right. Yeah. Seventeen. Um, so you are kind of looking around for for something to fight, and you can see that one running away up there, mm. just beyond the edge of the hill where that that stone was. Mm -hmm. You make out the small amount of light just behind the rock, which effectively is where that. Where that uh, that uh, candle is. Okay. Uh, Does my passive perception of twenty four catch that? Clark will nope. point. That Because you weren't looking at that, and uh, his his stealth is actually high enough that it, it wasn't triggering your passive, um, but you didn't know to look. So. That away. Okay. So that away. Uh, that when he oh, says that point. to you, it becomes I mean, immediately it's obvious. Light. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it was only a small sliver, and he was actively looking at the battlefield, whereas you had somebody right in front of you, um, and I kind of kind of looking away in this direction as well as he ran up the hill. Um, but as soon as he says that, you can see the sliver of light around the edge of the of the rock. Uh, up this hill. Right behind where that. Uh, right here. Right there. That way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Basically, also right behind where Askasix was, so she didn't see okay. it either. Now that he's pointed out, do I see it? Uh, no, because your passive is not high enough. Okay. 
you'd still have to look. But he, you know the direction he was indicating. Yeah. The, the rock is the one thing in that direction. Can I ask roughly how far that rock is away? Uh, about, well, actually, count it out there. Because you, you we'll, we'll okay. say it's accurate so enough. So roughly that, yeah. that far away. Okay. Um, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's like much, 65, 70 How much feet. of the action is that away? Uh, how much of the action of the field? Uh, speaking of the, that, that away. Oh, that's nothing. That's a free okay. action. All right. Let's um, move forward. One, two, three, four. And in doing so, draw a bow. Okay. And his arrow. And I'll do the math. Okay, gonna to make, make gonna do the uh, okay. Yeah, uh, he's got full cover, That's so that okay. will count against you. But yeah. basically, raises his AC by five. Try our best here. Uh, that's a nineteen. So I'm Ooh, this it. could be close. Um, this would be really funny. Sixteen twenty-six. Uh, and then uh, minus five, you said. No, uh, he, no, he it's it's five right? under the AC, oh, okay, but that actually hits. Cool. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Well, ah! On the other, other side. Out. Okay, so I see that. Good. You'll hear that. Okay, but I mean, I see where the arrow. You went. saw where the arrow went. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice blind shot. I like that. Uh, eight nine damage piercing. Normal human damage. Well, normal mundane damage. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes. I am a champion. Yeah. I crit on 19s. It does yes, not do. seem to be connected to, to weapons. That's why it's stuff. it's added as his AC rather than your minus. So, okay. yeah, you actually critted on that. Cool. Well, I'll give you another right. one here. Uh, 10, 11, so with, uh, with an a, extra two. <laughs> an extra two. So, a total of. Uh, let's say nine earlier. 10, 11. Okay. Um, and. Oh. That's uh, I am a savage attacker, being a half orc. Sure. Mm. You critted, so you're more damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, eight, uh, seven more. So that's now 18 in total? Yeah. Okay. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Agreed. So yeah, <laughs> there's probably quite a yelp of surprise on the other side and a bit of a grunt uh, as uh, he's now... Uh, well, more or less been spotted, if you will, but still still hidden, or still undercover. Is he still invisible? Uh, he is uh, uh, not invisible, but he's behind full cover, so you can't see him. All you're seeing is that little thin edge, and it would have been really difficult to see him. I have another question. Sure. Would a 19 hit? Uh, firing at the set, is that your total? No. Uh, that would not hit. Another arrow goes sailing. Uh, it in kind of direction. pings off the top of the rock as you try to try to once again kind of pin, pinpoint. Uh, that was Clark Elzera. You can clearly see where Clark is firing at, and looking at it now, it seems obvious. I'm going uh, to go hit it. Okay, so you're going to fly over. Yep. Okay. Uh, that is a 14. What we will do is kind of pretend this is the back because no one's going to be running around the back of the. Sure. Thing. And you see it there. Nope. Put the candle where it was. Okay. Just imagine that whole part just rotated now, okay. 90 degrees. <laughs> Different part of the world. Uh, and you see before you a very tall, strange-looking creature, um, mostly naked except for a belt, onto which, strangely enough, there is a book, it looks like. Uh, one hand seems to be flowing with electricity, while the other is massive, almost reaching entirely to the ground, but it is currently grappling onto the, uh, the uh, uh, bone. Does a 14 hit? Uh, a 14 does not hit. Also has very strange bat-like features. Cool. The other one's a miss with a one on the die, Ooh. and then two ones on the damage dice yeah. that I uh, rolled at the same time. Not meant to be. Not it meant seems to be. somewhat surprised to see you, but also kind of grins. Uh, let's see. That is uh, Elzera's go. Zakis. You bastard! It's ours! <laughs> So if I'm here, does he have partial cover? Uh, make a perception check. Nine. Yes. Okay, but yes, I have to warn the war mage, so that... I just wanted to make sure he had, like, partial yep. cover versus, like, full yep. cover. If you really bone the roll, it would have been full cover. Okay. Eh. Firebolt. Ten plus eleven, so twenty-one. And twenty-one hits. Uh, what kind of magic is it? Just fire. Fire. Okay. 14 plus 11, so 
14. Okay. It looks as though he kind of shrugs it off. It still seems to have burned a little bit, but not as much as you expected. Okay. Um, that's Zakis. Uh, that is... Oh, yeah. She flies over. Yeah, don't yeah. piss her off. <laughs> and she just... She oh. swears again in, uh, in Infernal. What, what, what and, you say now? Uh, well, first of all, the swearing, which is kind of... It's weirdly kind of much about lineage for her. Okay. Which is you, your creator, and their creator's creator should be should be destroyed in the most painful way possible. Uh, but she does say a name, actually, or what you recognize is probably a name. Uh, uh, Kikteris. Uh, she recognizes who it is, uh, and also says, "You have been a thorn in my master's side. Now I will be a spear in yours, or a sword in yours." But worked better when I was thinking in my head. Uh, and she draws her long sword once again uh, with double-handed effectiveness. Uh, that is a 22 to hit. A 14 to hit, which actually does not hit. And an 18 to hit. So you see her swing downward uh, with her sword, the green edge of it glinting strongly. Um, but... Uh, while the green seems to smear across its hide, uh, it seems to be almost entirely undamaged by the strikes. Uh, as uh, the sword bites, but seems to skitter across its tough hide. All right. uh, okay. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. We'll do that. Good, because it's not that effective. Uh, that's its turn. Uh, or her turn, rather. I'm ruined. Well, you feel a cold emptiness as that beauty that was there beside you has now vanished. Yes. I'm going to fix that. You saw where the battle went. Mm. Uh, well. Ooh, how close can you get? 5, 10. I see him from there. Uh, make a perception check. Twenty-two. Uh, yes, you can. It is partial cover. Okay. Well. I say. Uh, with command, mm -hmm. would you let me use a two-word command, like a drop it? Sure, to that seems reasonable. Drop. Then, yeah, he's sure, in some language, that's, that's you know, mm. one, like, one word. Lush. Does he look demonic or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I just get that. No, I just use common. Um, Ta. Mm. Ta. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, uh, so I will... Tell, uh, I will yell at him, drop it. Okay. And he has to make a wisdom save okay. against my 17. Release. Yeah, but release could be other things. Okay, yeah. Um, so I thought yeah. of that one. Uh, you say yeah. wisdom save? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's not as good as I hoped it would be. Uh, 14. Okay, does not beat my 17. Now, he doesn't drop it now. Okay. His next action has to be to drop it, which is probably not an action action, but... Okay. Uh, I mean, well, if it's worded oh, yeah. as his next These action. guys are gone. Well, it, it says guy. that on his turn, he has to try I'm to do that. Right um, yeah. That was his whole point of running away. Yeah. yeah. Wisdom save or follows the command on the next turn. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. We are at... Oh, and I'm bringing this 20 feet closer, but it's not going okay. to do anything. Uh, the voice that you use, amplified by the magic, seems to ring out across, and... Uh, oh, yeah, he understands your language. Uh, it's a simple human language, or elven language. Uh, he looks over kind of in surprise, and it's almost like he wasn't even thinking. He just looks down at himself, surprised that he dropped it. Uh, and 
Hmm. No, he's, he's he's kind of dedicated to the mission, so he reaches down and picks it back up again. Yeah. Um, That'll at least hopefully take his action. Though. And it's a heavy pillar. Well, uh, it doesn't seem to be so heavy to him. No, he's a big guy. Um, but that's all he's able to do. He kind of scrabbles down and, and once again heaves it back up under his arm. Or it's a left arm, technically. Uh, that brings us around to... Uh, oh, yeah, those guys are gone. Everybody's gone except for him. He's left all alone. Oh, no, wait, sorry, Ordo. Keep forgetting Ordo. But Ordo's action is to stay there. Yeah. He's not really he's not really meant to be out in the middle of fighting. Uh, this was a place of solace for him. It still uh, is. It's still kind of is. Clark, you're up. Uh, let's move ahead. And I forgot to do a third action, by the way, last time. But that's okay. Third attack. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to get one for doing crits? You get an attack. So an attack and attack. Yeah. And then yeah. I got a bonus attack. For oh, yeah, I suppose, crits, yeah. So, oh, well, it's well, okay. You should probably there because you're only 20 feet. Yeah, so I can do 40, and as a yeah. bonus, I'll dash another 20. And hopefully I'll get some. You'd be on the other side so, of it okay, now. Yeah, so yeah I think yeah. you're... Yeah. Can, we, can we get base to base with him? Sure. Okay. I would like to slay him. He does not like to be slayed. Okay. That's, that's my intent. I want to be <laughs> he, he intends not to be slayed. Okay. Let's see how this goes. That's a 19. That's a crit. That's a bit of a slay. Uh, sorry, what's your total to hit? Total? Yeah. Uh, with Lucille, it would be sixteen twenty-seven. Okay. Yep, that hits. Also, it's a crit. Yep. Okay. Um, the second strike probably won't hit. Uh, okay, Lucille. Uh, the third one though for being yep. a crit. I should probably do that too. Uh, no. A after we just talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> I Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you do have an ally nearby, so sneak attack will count. And it's also yeah, I can't sneak attack with a two hundred. Oh, that's right, it's that I'm, thing. I'm a, I'm a broken rogue. Right, right. <laughs> Brogue. A rogue. <laughs> Ooh, and for that roll, you should be. Well, I get to hear all these ones. Oh, well, there's that part, which is nice. But I got to keep those. Well, that's okay. All right, so that's uh, twelve and plus seventeen. This is Lucille. 20, yep, twenty-one. Tell me about Lucille. One moment. Twenty-one and uh, three. 24. 24, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and five more is 29. 23 and five is 28. Sure. 24. Yeah, 20, 24, yeah, 24, okay. 29, sure. Okay. Uh, Lucille flashes silver in the, this terrible place, hopefully channeling some of the light from the thing. Okay. And we're going to go maybe cut that arm right off if we could. Sure. So you swing uh, hard at, at, at the creature. The 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 sax is very brilliantly lit up in the uh, Lucille. Or Lucille, sorry, yeah, it's very brilliantly lit up in the, in the light. And then you come crashing down on that arm and kind of skids across the surface of it. You see a line where you left some damage, but it does not look nearly as impressive as you had hoped. No, I tried my best. Uh, as you realize that the weapon does not bite as it should, and it, it kind of shoulders the 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 rest of the burden. It did. Damage it though, right? He did hurt it, yep. Yep. Uh, that is Clark Elzera. I'll punch it in the face once. Uh, that is a 19 total. Uh, that hits. Cool, that's 5 and 7, so 12 plus 5, so 17. Okay. And then second hit is a, is a crit. Woo! Ooh, there you go. Uh, so that is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Woo. 19, 24. Oof, okay. Pretty big hits. Uh, let's see if I can do math. Yes. Uh, and it hisses at the the uh, the stinging blows, kind of one catching it in the small shoulder. Again, one arm just kind of normal size, the other one gigantic. Hits so. in the small shoulder, kind of knocking it back. Its hand crackling with pure energy. So. Uh, the and other one uh, kind of getting it in the in the. Uh, sorry, one one hit, right? No, both hit. Both hit. Yeah, the other one was was the crit. Yeah, catching it up underneath the the the, the, the pecs and kind of lifting kind, it up off the ground. Kind of punching it a little bit more into Lucille. Sure. Oh. Sure. Hey, that's, that's, cool. that's how you work together. Yeah. <laughs> Punch a guy into a sword. This is a weird fight. <laughs> uh, uh, and <laughs> uh, and those are magical. Yep. Yep. So. I took that into account. 
All right. Do demons like silver? Uh, it didn't seem to care. Okay. It looked really nice, though. It looked flashy as all hell. Just ask. Uh, it looked cool. Let's see. That is Elzera Zakis. There's a whole lot of fighting going on over there. Yeah. Oh, wait. I'm going to use a... I'm going to heal one. Ah, good point. Actually, I don't... Actually, no, I don't, because I don't have any more level one spell slots. Okay. I don't think so. All right. If I do, I do. I'll make my way to a better line of sight and say as I walk... Echoing what I'm ruined says, drop it means drop the goddamn pillar. And I'll cast <laughs> magic missile level four. Okay. <laughs> There's the four. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to add stuff. Eight. I do have a spell slot. Oh, actually. Yes. Hmm. Ten. Sure, why not? Uh, what level of spell is that? Four. Four? four? Uh, it 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 uh, smirks at seeing them come in, waves its electric hand, and the the, the missiles vanish as oh, it comes closer, master. as he dispels it. Dispel or counterspell? Dispel. What? I have a question. Is that a reaction? Oh, actually, wait. Sorry. Is that, no, it's not a reaction. It's not a reaction. Never mind. Nope. So, Never mind. Oh. oh, ah, I just lost the count in my head. <laughs> okay, so eight, ten. That's right. I forgot. Seventeen about that. plus Makes a lot six. More sense, then. So twenty-three. Twenty-three. Magic Ooh. or force. Yeah. Right. Magical force damage. All right. Cool. That's Zacchaeus. Uh It is uh, <laughs> your new friend's chance here now. Uh, I really wish she had more different kinds of attacks, but she really doesn't. She hits stuff uh, with sticks. She Well, she hits them with swords. Swords? Nice. They're sharp metal swords. They're swords. sharp metal swords. Uh, once again, oh yeah, drawing both hands. I should remember that. Oh, uh, the missiles knock it a little bit out of kilter, and she manages to miss, uh, but does not miss the second time or the third time. Now I'll use the right dice. I also forget about that. Uh, okay. Uh, she slices into it uh, quite meanly. Her sword seems to be cutting into it nice and deeply. Uh, with three blows. Once again, kind of the first one, because it was off kilter, she misses a little bit. Then she backhands across, cutting a nasty, nasty gouge across its stomach. And then just a, an, a, an attack to that big arm again. Kind of the same sort of idea you guys were having, where she wants to kind of cleave it off. Uh, and she she shouts at it. Uh, again, an infernal, so you recognize it, uh, Zacchaeus. Um, uh, I will hunt down your living corpse, and I will destroy you time and time again. Yeah! Uh, it is Amrun's turn. Away. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm going to go 20 more feet, so it's kind of tucked in here, but it's not on the right side of it. Okay. Uh, Thirty-five. He's over here as well. Okay. Uh, I think I can You're see like him from there, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of like here. Okay. But make a perception check. Um, Twelve. Twelve partial cover again. Yep. Um. I said, drop it. Make another wisdom save. All right. So the best thing, thing I can do right now. Natural twenty. Okay, so he's, he sort of grins in your direction. No, you hear in your head. Okay, this is for my That's master. For okay. uh, that Who's is, your master? Uh, that is, uh, didn't work, not going to tell you. Uh, that is its turn. Let's see, what is it going to do? Kind of surrounded. It has the pillar once again under its arm, however. Um, it starts beating us with the pillar. I was expecting that to come. It's back. it's tempting, it really is, uh, but instead he's going to vanish. Each of you can make perception checks now that you kind of understand this trick. If we understand this trick, does that mean we get it at advantage? Nope. Oh. It means you get to roll. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry, twenty-two. Well, I got twenty-one. So. <laughs> All right. Nine. All right. One. 
One, yeah. The two of you are kind of like, where did he, where did he go? Where did he go? Uh, the two of you notice, and, and again, we're going to double back as if this is away from the fight. Sure. So I'm not going to confuse him there uh, as he has teleported 60 feet away. And then turns and starts to run. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's so he gets another away. he's 100 feet away now okay. cool I can get to him oh yeah it doesn't mean it worked for him but that's all he's going to do uh, but that is his turn uh, Clark you're up alright I think I saw him mm-hmm. I'll say he went that away he put Lucille away <laughs> just take 20 feet steps forward pull the bow out again and okay yeah. Try another <laughs> make that noise while take doing a, it <laughs> take another couple of shots alright that's a fail with a two. Ooh. Uh, next arrow goes out with a uh, math. Nine, 10, 11, 21. 21 is a hit. All right. There's nothing standing between you and him this time. He's practically Ooh. out in open space. He was hunkered down and trying to hide the thing, but not Are doing you so doing well. Are using a longbow? I am. That's a D8. I should do a D8, shouldn't I? Mm. Let's try that instead. Might work better. Nope. <laughs> um. <laughs> trying to help. <laughs> Big do what I can for you. Don't do a thing, so I'm nope. okay. In that case, I'm going to do a whopping three piercing damage from distance. All right. The arrow barely sinks in. Yeah. It actually falls off of him as he as he runs yeah, by. You can, you can, yeah. uh, he is kind of limping a little bit where uh, Askazix had hit him in the leg, though. Okay. Uh, it doesn't seem to be slowing him, but he's not happy about it. Elzara. I'm going to go 100 feet to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, hit him once. With a natural 19. Plus uh, eight. That hits, oh yeah. Uh, so that's 4, 6, 11 uh, damage. Okay. And that is cocked. Uh, 16. 16 to hit? Uh, 16 plus 8. Oh, so yeah. 24. Yeah. There's Sorry. a big, big difference Brain. between those two. <laughs> Brain. <laughs> Reading what is on dice. Sure, uh, sure. So 16. Plus eight to hit with uh, 15, 20 damage. So describe how you kill him. I punch him in the face. <laughs> okay. So the the first strike kind of hits him in the shoulder, sending him a little bit a little bit half turned. He looks up at you, and for the first time in this fight, not smirking, not <laughs> laughing, as your your uh, air fist collides with his face, and you feel the the satisfying crunch of his face just sort of melting inward. Uh, and he goes flying back, dropping the, the, the pillar entirely. And, uh, 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 yeah, he falls down dead. Um, you see Askazix uh, rushing over as the body begins to dissolve. I will also rush over. Um, she's a little faster than yeah. you because you can fly. But uh, uh, she comes flying, and you think for a moment that she's flying straight at you. She does a little bit of an upturn and then comes solidly down with the, the, uh, the sword in both hands, jamming it through his receding form. Let's see if she's fast enough. Oh, yeah. As the sword comes down, a little burst of energy happens, and you see not the dissolving body, but it turns to mist and smoke and burns away. And stay dead this time. I'm going to with my 14 strength. Uh, so as I, as I catch up <laughs> afterwards, uh, is the book still <coughs> there? It's gone. Damn it, was, it. it was part of its essence. Uh, there was a book on its belt. Where did it go? There was. Like asking, asking. Oh. Uh, it is part of its being. Damn it. Let me help you with that. <laughs> and her voice is huskier now. Maybe the battle brought it out in her. You're not really sure. Uh, but she she uh, reaches for the pillar. Do you drag it I away? I yeah, bring it back to the group. Okay, but do you do you drag it away from her trying to pick it up? I look at her confused. I still don't trust her. Okay. Um, she's put she puts away the the blade and reaches down and grabs the other end. I'm running over to it. Okay. <laughs> you see this strange demonic being helping Elzera, just after kind of colliding with what was left of whatever being it was to here before. Um, who are you? Who are you? I, I was not told of your coming. I am Emery Alasar. We were also not told of his coming. Oh, How'd you get here? 
only living priest of Paluxia, the mother. Uh, and she looks surprised and confused. Then he will definitely want to speak to you. He who? My lord and master. The grinder of bones. The recycler of souls. He who gives life in death. Lord Peturo. He's actually a good guy, we think. He is? Yeah. Him and Biloxi used to be together. Oh, you didn't see the, the murals in the Temple of Namazani? Can, can we show him the murals? No? Who are you asking? <laughs> uh, name, name. The, not Arboto? Oh, Wing, Lady. Oh, uh, Askazix? Yeah, because she is concerned with time. Um, she doesn't have any clue what you're talking about. So she just sort of looks puzzled at you. We should get going. There will be others. Who was that? You mentioned a name, Gicteris. Mm. Yes. And he's gone for good? I doubt it. He serves the other. Arbax. Yes. Well, may he remain dead for as long as possible? I agree. And she claps you on the shoulder. That is a good <laughs> word. Okay. Are we supposed to be helping... Okay. This may, person. May I? I? Go right ahead. I'm not the smart one. You'll get a better description from these two, but I'll give you mine. It's short. <laughs> we're in hell. That's a bone of your god. And we're going to use it as a bargaining chip to get out of here. But we're destined to be here to do a thing that changes this plane. And I personally intend to be here until that happens. Then you I'm have gonna... already changed this place. Not enough. Then I'm going to go home. And hopefully you guys can come with me. Hmm. Yes. I really I say, wish also I... Also, I'm married to a tree. But also, you don't understand that. <laughs> I kind of wish I'd cast that spell back at the church, but I didn't feel it was quite ready. <sighs> Is everything okay? Ordo's kind of wandered out. Looks yeah, like everything's good. I, I didn't prepare my word of recall. Oh, well. You're what? Oh. I don't think that will work. Not in this dimension. Although, how did Kicktavis manage to teleport? He is a native here. Okay. Right. That's a secret for word to recall. It's supposed to work anywhere. It just takes me home. Mm. And the rest of us. But, because I didn't think I'd be in another dimension, um, it's not ready, so I can't do it. Um, so, okay, Petero's a good guy? You cannot leave until you have spoken to my lord. I will not allow it. What's the easiest way there? Can you... Wait, if Kicteris was a native of this plane, and you are a native of this plane, could you teleport us to Petero? No, I cannot. Damn it. What's but you can show us a quick way there. Yes. And let's, how do we, uh... Let's do that. Carry this... If we can wait an hour, I can I become an earth elemental... And I can kind of carry it. I should be able to carry it. Mm. Can we avoid uh, upwards glances as we make our way? I'm assuming we're flying. No, we cannot. This will be noticeable. That's what I was afraid of. But it may also serve that purpose well. Wait, well? Why? The armies that fight will see this as a beacon. A sign that change is happening Won't and that they? we are winning. Won't they try to come after us? They have their job to do, as do I have mine. If you say so, you know this place better Tarot than we do. Alexia yes, I do. I'm still at one point. a little uneasy with the idea. Um, they fell out. He, I think, fell into some sort of depression, which is why this place sucks. Okay. So if we, understand that. if we return a piece of his bride to him, we may be able to change his attitude. Also, that might be him. I'll point at the moon. <laughs> or the sun. Quote. Yeah. There's no moon and sun. There's just it's ambient a, light. It's a skull. There's just oh, like the, the skull. The, the, the ember skull. Yeah. Sun size. Okay. Okay. So that is a bone of Plexi's actual physical body. Uh, there are more. But this is the one we can get. Yes. Um, you'll understand if I'm a little unwilling to perhaps 
give that up right away. I understand but that. I understand. Uh, this is... We've been here for I don't know how long. Also, you don't understand me. <laughs> yeah. Um, she just goes right over we, your head. We've been here a while. Uh, and that was been like uh, a week or so. <laughs> Almost a week and a half at this point. A week and a half since you guys disappeared. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Miley's a little worried about the two of you. How's she doing? Um... I didn't think about the time. Did, it, uh, would I have had a chance to cast ascending while I was walking to the temple to just say, How "I'm looking doing? into something about"? Them. It was really almost at a run at that point. Yeah. Sure. Um, uh, you, she's worried. Uh, your place is a mess. Um, but, uh, well, okay, I've found you. Yeah. Do you have the means to fly? All of you? No. Not at the yes. moment, but if we wait an hour? Yes. Or right now? You guys do. You guys can turn into air still for another eight hours. Right. I forgot about that. I can't carry that thing. But we can't carry the thing, can't carry, and uh, you can't. Askazix could carry it. She said she could. I, I can. Okay. I'm going to be like, Doing my best to memorize the pillar. Okay. Uh, you note upon the surface that there are some carved elements. I'll remember mm. all of this. <laughs> yep, I'm just. You'll sort of... never forget. Hey. <laughs> for the next thirty days. <laughs> well, that could be forever. Wait, is, for him. is that shadow days or like real life days? <laughs> I guess we'll find. You'll out remember that. it for the rest of your life. Woo! Thirty days. Well, however short it may be. <laughs> so you're memorizing something. Okay, no, this is location spell. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't yeah. have a way to get Umrun to be able to fly because I only have... I'd have to use my one seventh level spell. How far away is this? I mean, how long would it take to get there? It will take us quite a while. I can arrange for travel if you cannot fly yourselves. Three of us can. He cannot yet. I'd rather stay with the pillar. Same. Mm. Then it will yes. take an hour. You may rest if you will. All right, perfect. Let's uh, rest back in the temple. If you wish. Sure. The, sure, the, the says Ordo. The bright pillar of light will be less visible from the temple. You will return with it and leave as I asked? Yes. Come with me? Yes. Are, are you allowed inside the temple? I will not be joining you inside. Okay. She probably can't. I don't think I really want to okay. say that she can. Right. So, you all walk into the temple, uh, carrying sure. the... Uh, the, the uh, bone, as you will. Standing, almost standing on guard, Askazix is outside. Uh, her weapon is drawn and she seems to be ready for things. Um, we will pick up with this particular moment, I think, next week. Mm. Okay. Provided we are able to play, there's a possible the schedule won't work out that way, but uh, we are running a little bit long, so I wanted to kind a of reach to rest. a point. Uh, we will have a short rest and maybe get a chance to catch up. So, um, I want to thank you if you're watching. If you watch it live, I think uh, Other Doc was there briefly. Uh, so, thanks to you for joining. If you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. It's really kind of cool that people are checking this out. Um, if people want to follow us properly, well, we can start with, uh, with YouTube. Well, if you watch this on YouTube, you should probably subscribe to this channel, like this video, and make a comment. Uh, comments are apparently are important, but don't forget to ring the bell so you know when the next video comes out. And Marie, how could they contact us otherwise? They can contact us through the Legend of the Drowned Isles uh, Facebook page, where I know we've been a bit off schedule and stuff. We are trying to get a more consistent schedule of some kind, and all of that information will be on the page, and we will keep be keeping that up to date. And for a more personal touch, you can join the Watchers of the Drowned Isles Facebook group that can be found on the page. And I will say, there are magical incantations you can do to to 
encourage and increase the chances of us posting more, which is to say hi. It's a pretty yeah. simple incantation. Right. You can do it, and we will definitely appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys, for playing. And we will see you again either immediately, if you're watching on YouTube. That'd be kind of neat. Or in a week.